in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of the Top Ten Show. I am John Roca. Uh, I am Matt Nost. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Not bad. Yeah, Not you bad. Got, you got your coffee? Is that I right? I got my coffee. I took my gum out because I want to be professional. It's very classy. Put I that know. right on the lid because it's a disposable cup. <laughs> That's right. You could recycle everything. We'll just assume that burns off when they melt the pr- plastic. Oh, we're good to go. Dig it. You We're got good to go. uh, the World Champs uh, uh, LA Lakers thing on in honor of what, what? In honor of the coins we got last week? Oh, no. Did Not you frame our coins? Of... Did you frame our coins? We talked about that. I, it's sitting on a shelf. Oh. <laughs> it seems a little premature. Yes, I went out. I took the time this week. I just had, I had framing time. And I set it aside. I knew intuitively this was coming up at some point. <laughs> no, it is sitting on a shelf. They're just resting up there out of harm's way. That's all they're doing. Uh, yeah, we, those, the, for um, those of you who may not have listened to last week's show, we, were, we got a great gift. These like um, 19, what, what, what year is the Olympic team? A dream team? 86? Oh, no, 92. 92. Sorry, 92 dream but team But they're coins. practically pure silver coins. So yeah. we got these last week. We got Larry Bird and we got Magic Johnson, two coins. But fans, we have another gift down there. We've we do. We've a gift a week for a yeah. while. This is becoming a trend now. People are starting I've to I've already gotten emails. we got one or two more coming next week. Oh! Yeah, I'm just like, hey, whatever. You guys want to keep sitting. So last week, there were two dream team coins. The whole set is worth 500 and something. Insane. $5. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's very kind. This I don't know what we do with that except the coins. Well, I don't know, but he that's kept a good them, question. You know? Maybe yeah, he's but, a big Ewing fan. He just wanted to hold on to that one. Yeah, he's got to hold on to stock. I mean, because you guys got great coins. These are all time greats. This yeah. is, you know, Magic was out of the league at that point mm-hmm. uh, before he made his comeback, and Larry was on his last, really his last vertebrae yeah. at that point, <laughs> just just playing Not out even. the string. Not you know? true. That's true. Well, those dulcet tones you just heard is our guest for today's show. One half of the schmoes know. Uh, you've seen him on numerous things. One of the best stand-ups I've ever seen in my entire life. The guy gave me my first break in stand-up comedy. Right? <laughs> first and last break. You say that like, as if you put in 10 years ever since. This guy, this guy gave me my break. This is the one. I remember back when we were young pups in yeah. October. Fuck. Uh, the man. No, I remember Ellis legend. when we first Mark started. Ellis, yes. Yeah, both fat alcoholics. Yeah. Getting like, dude, I got a, I can eight minutes set here. I'm doing ten minutes over there. Yeah. I'm just going to go crush these things. A, a combined uh, weight loss between Nose and I of at least yeah. 60 pounds. Really? Yeah. I think I've lost... 60 or 70 on my own. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I took down a good 30, so uh, yeah. maybe maybe 100 pounds. Well, it's, it's like a yeah. human person we lost. Pretty much. We lost Cody. Yeah. Is what we lost. <laughs> we're, we're terrible babysitters. That's what, what happened. He's about. young enough. We lost him, and then that gelatinous blob grew, grew into the beautiful young man we all know. Wow. It's Cody Hall. And you're still you're still sometimes sensitive about it. Like, we talk about it on the show. Occasionally, it'll come up about your, like, you feel a little heavier or whatever. Oh, I just body It's fascinating to me. Yeah. Yeah, because you're skinny as fuck, in my opinion. No, nah, well, yeah, but, like, but I got, got old little... man punch, and because oh. I was fat before, mm-hmm. it's just like, yeah. I got to work twice as hard just to keep this little bullshit right. off. It's never going away. <laughs> no, it's a, like, like you reach a certain point, and it's like, I, if I look in the mirror hard enough, I can strain and see one ab trying to get out. Yeah. Like, at a certain part of the I day. I got the top two. Yeah. Right there. I never had an ab in my life. Really? Never had an ab. Oh, really? In my entire life. Okay. No. Working towards it right now. Hey, interesting, interesting. I'm just box jumping my way to abs. Yeah, you like posting those videos, Ellis. One you're day. Working out. I, I respect that. You work out that hard. You want to. You, 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 what? What good is working out unless the world can? Because look, there's like, one of two things that working out will result yeah, in. Yeah, Either you having a great body or you at least bragging to the world that you did work out. True. And I'm going to be the latter. <laughs> the, I've seen one of the videos. Yeah. My only problem oh, with yeah. the video is when you see that. The outfit looks the exact same as when I see you in everyday life. <laughs> so I'm just like, did you actually go to the gym or did you set up a camera somewhere and I'm going to jump on some boxes? You want to meet the wizard day. behind the curtain? It's the I, same I, pair of shorts. I mean, people think the cutoff is only for workout. No, no, no. No, the cutoff t shirt. 
T-shirt and shorts. That is a regular Mark Ellis. I mean, right I, I wish I, uh, I as for many reasons, I wish I played in the NBA because you always get a new uniform every time. You always you get do. new shoes, like every game. Yeah. You have a new clean suit to wear, and then you get something else to wear for the post-game press conference, right. and you just have never-ending new clothes. And me, I work out in the same three things that I wear to work every day. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do in that basketball. That so sad. In basketball shorts. I can't work out in basketball shorts to go below your knees. No, I don't even like yeah, those. Yeah, I don't like to be I don't restricted. Like playing basketball. But you wear those all the time. I mean, they're, they come down to the knee, I yes, would I'm say. So, yeah. They're not below the knee, yeah. yeah. As long as I can do Well, maybe I played more basketball than you, Rome. Well, <laughs> maybe, this... maybe I felt out the way the basketball shorts can actually apply to a gym. I don't feel the need. I don't understand the anger from that side. I was just saying. I don't know. He's on the defensive for some yeah, reason. Yeah, really, clearly. It must have been the thing we were well, talking you... about off, off mic. I know, mean, Roka grew up. Perhaps he's bringing some of that angst in with him. Roka did grow up in an era where uh, the basketball players in the NBA wore very tiny shorts. The so maybe huggers. that's what you were. Yeah. yeah. So do we, though, when we were little kids. Yeah. Like 80s uh, yeah. basketball. I watched it nonstop, and it was the short shorts. Right. I don't recall watching a sitting down and watching like an NBA or a college game until after the Fab Five had already made their mark. Shut up, really? On college athletics. Oh, man, I watched wow. so much NBA in the... Like, so much so when guys go up for a dunk, be like, Andy's going to get dunked in his face, too. Watch yeah, this. Like, right. shorts are so short. <laughs> like, something like, I even realized that at eight years old. I'd be like, that doesn't, whoa. It's just, ama- it's almost like a reality show challenge or something. It's like, hey, let's take the biggest dicks in the world uh-huh. and see if they can stay in the smallest, tiniest shorts known to man. In a sport dominated by brothers. Yeah. And brothers got large, they're known for having large penises. Uh-huh. So it's just like, this having this in there is just like, it's such a weird thing. Just wrap it around your thigh yeah. a couple times. Whatever you gotta do. Go to work. <laughs> little Donny, it. Get a little holster for it and just fucking run out there. You know? You gotta check to clear. <laughs> yeah, so I, I remember watching to tape when they were to tape the finals were that's how old I am we would watch the NBA finals to tape right when they right. taped them and then showed them and you didn't yeah. you know you would you know, I never what, had that thank God what a newspaper and then then eventually like in the eighties mid eighties or a little bit before the mid eighties they started to show them in real time I think like it was actually. the advent of the Celtics Lakers it yeah. might not have been yeah, the first that Celtics Lakers but mm-hmm. I, I think Coincided. that's when. It started to uh-huh. happen because, yeah. you know, people would call their West Coast friends. But did, can you believe what just happened? And because the Lakers were a West Coast team yeah. that you you wanted to know. You didn't want to wait until your Boston friends told you right. what happened. You wanted to find out for yourself in real time. Yeah. Can you imagine sports back in the day when you get it on a ticker? Oh, like you ever did, they show like some movie in the 20s or something yeah. and they've got one of those stock tickers. But now it's just giving them information. He's reading it out. Oh, Johnson took him down in the third round. <laughs> <laughs> Just like there's an update every 15 minutes <laughs> and something comes across. Well, that was the worst part is watching ESPN because ESPN used to oh, have yeah, the updates the at, uh, That's right. what was it at? It was like at 8 and 58 mm-hmm. past the or 28 and 58 past the hour or something yeah. like that. So you had to wait. You had to watch it and then not blink because yeah. like I'm yeah. looking for Wake Forest scores and they never I, – I still don't know how oh. they order them. Yeah. Because it's not alphabetical. It's Sometimes not by it's conference. By rank. It's just so weird. Yeah. Now it's by rank. But, yes, back then they just float them all through whatever yeah. was, in the, was, it was in time. And the thing that was interesting too is if you missed it, yeah, you had to sit there and wait the whole time through that mm-hmm. whole cheerleading yeah. competition. It or was like pre cursing, yeah. like, pa, pa. yeah. <laughs> so I just want to know one, one game. I missed one game. How is that possible? Got to watch how many kids spell before I can catch. Yeah. The new version is I've had my uh, <laughs> in game one of the NBA finals. My uh, my uh, TV screen froze mm-hmm. after uh, the first free throw, so it came back out and I caught it right as he was missing. But I'm missing all that in between. Like, get back to the game. Go, 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 go. It just froze. At the end when Hill yes. was at when the When Hill line. was shooting. So he oh, made Oh, wow. That is not a first. clutch TV. No, I was just there. like, what's, what is a cl- shit service? Dude, you have the TV version of J.R. Smith. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. I thought the game was over. I thought we were up. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, we're talking basketball because, uh, A... Uh, these guys have had a bas- These guys have played basketball together for a very, very long time. I've only recently started playing basketball with Matt Nost at his Saturday games, and I'm already got injured. I already got injured. I had an MRI I, I on Sunday. Name? How you was went, the name? Yeah, you went too fast, too quick. I did. I did. I tried. I tried to think I was thir- uh, 25 yeah. years old again when I'm not. And uh, I went to the MRI on Sunday, so I'll be seeing the doctor hopefully sometime in the next week or so to find out what happened. But it doesn't affect our game against the Patriots. We got a little bit of a delay because Jeff Snyder's been in a car accident. He was in a car accident. <laughs> you say that so happily. <laughs> I didn't know he was in a car accident. Just, and Jeff Snyder's been in a car accident, so we're good so, to go. So he sounded I'll, like I'll he had some sort of responsibility for said yeah. car accident. Why are you, why are you Liz, talking it's about? really easy to cut the brakes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the JFK assassination. <laughs> Jeff Snyder, they changed his route that morning <laughs> for mysterious reasons. He's not usually on the 10, but he was when he had the car accident. Watch that. Back and to the left. Watch Snyder. He goes back <laughs> and to the left right here. <laughs> oh, that's more like World War One, where... 
Fernand, uh, Franz Ferdinand ended up in front of one of the failed guys, went and grabbed a drink somewhere, and for, uh, his car broke down right outside of it, and he walked out and managed to take care of what he couldn't do before. Wow. That's bad fucking luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your car breaks down, and they shimmy over into this alleyway or something, and it oh. happens to be. You're like, oh. Yeah. I, I'm not going to get, get I'm going to get a chance to kill him. <laughs> well, I thought for sure my time was done. You couldn't believe it. Like, he Son stopped right there? Oh. There's nobody around him? It's just one car? There's like that's, four people there. That's a sign from the universe. Apparently God wants me to kill this <laughs> yeah, man. I gotta kill him now. That's the only thing you can take from that. That's bad fucking luck. Or the guy, there's a dude that was in Hiroshima and then left there and ended up in Nagasaki or whichever got oh dropped first. Oh my God. Oh, right, right. Yeah, it was like a yeah. traveling businessman. I don't know if he was on business at the one and was going home or that was home and decided to go on a work that's trip. A, that's a phone call to your secretary after that experience. <laughs> yeah. Let's well. change the uh, route next time I go on. Do, do some traveling business? I don't know. Hiroshima's looking hot. I'm going to head over to Nagasaki. Nagasaki. I'll be safe there. Seems chill over there. Kablam. Um, anyway, so today uh, we are going to be talking our top ten basketball movies in honor of that Uncle Drew movie coming out. Oh, uh, looks so bad. I am, what? I am so excited so, oh, for that movie. I couldn't be more excited. Because there's some bad movies on my on my list. Bad what? is a strong word, but right. th- there's movies that I really get excited to watch, primarily because of the actual basketball player involvement in said films. Okay. And Uncle Drew is one of those where I'm excited to see Kyrie. I'm excited to see yeah. uh, Reggie Miller and Lisa Leslie and all these other, because those are just the ones advertised on the post. You know right. that there's going to be There'll tons be some good cameos. of cameos. Yeah. Jack's in it. Like I'm excited for that reason. Yeah. That's that's a crazy reason to be excited for that. Movie. I love watching that stuff. Well, but uh, random, I, I wish. But isn't Weber ran, Re, Weber is a random choice? It's not like he hasn't he's been in movies and he's been an actor in movies. This is a I, I get Lisa Leslie. She's a photogenic personality. She's been on TV. Ooh. Of course, Weber does stuff for TNT. But what? like Shaq makes sense. Charles would make sense. But I don't know why Weber. Charles makes has got to show up somewhere. Yeah, right. Reggie Miller is my question mark. Oh. That's when I saw. But Reggie's a character. Saw the tra- don't, uh, Yeah, no. <laughs> Reggie also, no. I mean, a legendary trash talker on the NBA court. Yeah, yeah but uh, have you heard him do color? Yeah, I like him. I I, I like him. I like but him. And Chris you don't like Reggie doing? I'm not, like not disrespectful. I like Reggie a lot. I hated playing him as a Bulls fan. I hated it oh. because I just wanted Jordan to punch him every time. But that's how good he was. Mm-hmm. Just like that guy can hit clutch shots. I don't like you for that reason. Do you- uh, I still like the man, but I just on the play by play. I'm like, how do you transfer that to? I'm now I'm going to be entertaining to millions of people on a comedic right. level. I don't know. I like Blow me away, he, Reggie. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. He calls into uh, to Dan Patrick like every yeah. week, uh, and I love the Dan Patrick show. And he's very okay. Him and him and that Dan, I haven't heard. They have a really good rapport together, yeah. and they talk all things. They don't just limit it to basketball. Like they might get around to what's happening in basketball, but I, that, that's what kind of won me over to Reggie being in the movie. And then Chris Webber, it's like he does seem to have a magnanimous personality. Mm. And that goes all the way back to what we were talking about before, the Fab Five. Yeah. And then him going through his NBA career, he just seems so sour for so long. Yeah. And I think the TNT has really brought out like hope what I think is his true personality, where mm-hmm. he just seems like a he seems like a nice dude to hang out with. Yeah. And he's socially yeah. conscious. Uh, look, this for me, Fab Five was my favorite college basketball team ever, this side of Patrick Ewing's Hoyas, the Hoyas. Have, like, you, have you investigated the 95-96 Wake Forest Demon Deacon? Yeah, I have. Is that the Randolph Childress? Or? Randolph and Tim Duncan. Yeah. Scooter Banks, Ricky Peral, <laughs> Ricky Tony Peral. Rowland, and Jerry was, Braswell. Woo, were fresh off. Ricky names Peral. Is, you guys got a starter named Scooter. I do not remember I, Scooter. That's you a, have a starter named Scooter. We, we might have the only Scooter in history. who This Scooter was actually a power <laughs> that's, forward. That's the first Scooter to get a college that's scholarship since 1952. <laughs> scooter. If, if you're a Scooter and you play basketball, you are a five foot two point guard. You're not a six foot eight guy. Right. Of course. Or a backup shooting guard. There's something lot, like that. There's a lot of. There, I don't think the. I don't think college has the same magic anymore like it used. I think there's some great games, but it ain't like it, like like uh, when Camby's UMass team or or Iverson's Georgetown team or even Ray Allen's UConn team. Those are great teams that built up for a number of years and then went for it, right. And Jordan was the anomaly leaving in his sophomore or junior year from Left North after Carolina. His junior year, yeah, yeah that's I mean, a, that was an anomaly. Moses back then. Malone, yeah, Moses went, went, but that was like, what the hell is wrong with this? Right, and then school, Kevin. Yeah. Garnett, even it was like, ah, oh, that's a that's a pretty crazy leap. Yeah. And I heartily co-sign what you're saying, but I do stand behind the reason for it. Sure. Because I think it's it's ridiculous of any organization to tell kids they can't go play. if you right. if yeah. you're good enough or somebody thinks you're good enough to pay you yeah. X amount of millions of dollars to go play, go play. As a you know, ACC college basketball fan, yeah. it bums me out, but that's not the kids' fault, you right. know. Yeah, no. Take the money. Yeah, take the money, especially because a lot of those kids come from terrible situations. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you're like, this could be life changing. You can get 
people out of certain neighborhoods, right. hopefully help them get a new job, stuff like that. Like you could raise an entire family up. Take it. I agree. It just sucks because it destroys it a ton of those kids. It's funny how the college basketball landscape has changed so much now that you don't even have the conversation yeah. if if a player is going to stay or if they're going to go. Like the, the their own coach yeah. in college will talk about, well, a, a great freshman is like, well, we know we're not having him next yeah. year. Yeah. And you go back you know, 20 years ago, it, Tim Duncan could have gone after his sophomore year, oh, yeah. after his junior year, and he stayed for all four years. You're never going to see he that. Was- Again, he was the last though. Yeah, because I, I remember when he came back for his senior year, and everybody's like, "Why are you doing this? You're the number one draft pick, guaranteed." And he goes, "He's still the number one." Yeah, draft and I pick. was like, "Hell yeah, that's a guy after his <laughs> education." Thanks, Tim. Good to have you on the squad. <laughs> you heard Dave Taylor's impression of me? <laughs> oh, is it? Ha uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Yes. yes. Hey, hey Mark, yeah. what's going on, buddy? I'm just so excited to be here. This is another comic we know, and it's kind of like Tally, but it's not quite Tally. This is my nose. It's, hey, it's, guys. it's an octave lower than Tally. But and yeah, it's, where does that come like, from? I have no experience yeah. with that version of Matt Nose. No, it's, it's from? Dave Taylor, another guy who's oh. one of the most condescending. The thing is, John, I am the smartest man in this room. He doesn't oh, sound like that either. Right. Here's that condescension oh. is what he's thinking. It's because Matt knows what play, but- Matt will come up to the comedy store, and Matt has, you know, he's got just a jovial look to him. Yeah. He walks sure. up, he just like kind of, <laughs> sure. he kind of bounds. It, it's, it, no, I'm not I talking about dead, the. Quite, quite fully dead inside yet. Yeah. And that's when that place is like, there we go. There we go. Let me just pull you in. Aha, <laughs> uh-huh, it's getting really dark yeah. in here. <laughs> <laughs> See, see, it's got a cold, guys. Why is it so cold? Uh, what, what used to be an accurate impression of that nose. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, uh, anyway, we're talking basketball because, like we said, we're talking, counting down these top ten basketball movies. And I really want to thank Mark Ellis for sticking around to do the show as opposed to his co-partner. Who uh, or his co uh, his partner? Look, not everybody who, does. As far as I'm concerned, at this point, he's Voldemort. So we, yeah. don't, have to, <laughs> we, we don't have say to say his name. His name. <laughs> we don't have to say his name. We'll just move on. They know who we're talking about. By the way, when he comes on the show, uh, that's going to be a gangbusters episode if he ever comes on the show. Well, we'll the fans see. voted, so I put a poll up after yeah. the no show the next day, and I was like, you know, fuck it. Oh, and uh, they voted him in. They did. But I would say at least 150 tweets said, just have him on so you can make fun of him, and roast him <laughs> for 90 minutes. And I was like, listen, do you want to be here for that? We could turn this into a thing. Oh my God! Um, yeah, I, I can. His birthday times ten. I can, to, to use a college worsts. basketball term, I can verbally commit to that episode. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I need a letter of intent. I need you to sign. <laughs> I've got a legal pad right here. I'm not. I haven't taken the the, the campus tour yet. I'll mock up. Ah, the campus is pretty nice. I can tell you. <laughs> Depends that. on how many hookers are in that dorm room the hey, night well, that I visit. Well, That's you right. are single, right? Uh, I am single. Johnny, be good. Don't need to worry about it. Very friend. single. Uh, one last question before we start these, these lists, uh, which we're going to count down. Um, what is your favorite uh, professional basketball team or college basketball? What is your favorite team ever? They're they're intertwined because I obviously grew up. My whole family uh, went to Wake Forest, and so I'm a huge Wake Forest basketball fan. You're a legacy, and I am a legacy. It's yeah. the only reason I got into Wake <laughs> um, <laughs> with, with that solid B average. Um, I get into Wake, and then we I got into Wake. After Randolph Childress and Tim Duncan had graduated the year before. Gotcha. Um, so I was there around the Josh Howard, Chris Paul era, but I always root for Wake Forest Wait a basketball. Minute. So you weren't even in college when Childress, Childress and Duncan were playing? No, I was a kid, but that was my that, that was kind of my initiation into I, because yeah, I again, in like too. you have to understand in the Ellis household, Wake Forest Oh, I see what the you're Wake saying. Wake Forest Demon Deacon, because my dad and my mom uh, went there. So, so you were cheering was for them already. As yeah. big right. as Got Washington it. Redskins football games Oof. on Sunday. If you ever talk to me, you know how big those were. Yeah. Yes, and me too. Yeah, and uh, so watching Randolph Childress, and it just came at that right time in my life too. Yeah. To like, you see somebody who's leading an underdog and just does not take any shit from Carolina or Duke or anybody else. I love Childress, and yeah. growing, growing up on the East Coast, where I grew up in, in Maryland, Virginia, DC area, mm-hmm. um, the ACC was everything. And Childress is right from your neck of right. the woods, exactly. From, uh, you know, from like Clinton Heights or mm-hmm. uh, Clinton, uh, I think Washington Heights. Yeah, Washington Anacostia. He yeah. stays in my head because he hit that dagger that. Uh, game winner. I can't mm-hmm. remember what it was. If it was in the tournament or in the ACC tournament. It was or in the ACC, ACC tournament, yeah. which, by the way, it's just incredible. piggybacking off that with, with how big the ACC tournament used to be and yeah. all these conference tournaments used to be, that's completely gone. Yep. Now. Yeah. Yep. Tournaments it's, are irrelevant almost. I have to the be reminded that the ACC tournament is happening. That yeah. was like the biggest annual thing on my calendar. Oh, yeah. Well, it's because of all the shifting when everybody yeah. wanted X numbers so they could potentially have their own 
uh, channel, yeah. their own network and whatnot. Yep. We got to build this to build the fan base to have. It just kind of slaughtered numerous. I mean, the Big 12 doesn't mean shit anymore. Yeah, Maryland and, and the Big 10 is disgusting. Yeah, Maryland. It, it uh, makes no sense. Rutgers. It's so Rutgers, weird. right. Yeah. Nebraska. The Mar- cause, yeah, Nebraska. Because the Maryland-North Carolina games, the Maryland-Duke games, those were the games, They were huge man. games. Yeah. Yeah, it's the equivalent. I mean, at least there's still, like, Duke in North Carolina. Yeah. There's still those ones that will, will draw me in as a casual UVA. fan. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't care near as much as I used to. No. It is, it's even weird for me to, like, watch a, a regular season Duke-Carolina game and have to be caught up. Yeah. On yeah. Who's who this? everybody is. Who's it? I know right. the bigger yeah. names. Right. Just because my, um, you know, when you live in sports fandom, you get, you know, kind of cir- circumferential references to like, right. oh, this is going on in soccer. This is going on in hockey. But right. college basketball, man, it used to be my wheelhouse. And moving to the West Coast kind of hurt that a little mm-hmm. bit anyway. But I had the ESPN package for years right. so I could watch all the games. And now it's just tough. One, because Wake just is not what it used to be mm-hmm. because you can't be when all these teams are getting absorbed into one huge giant power conference, which is what the ACC yeah, has right, become. Right. Um, but um, yeah, and then just to finish the earlier question, like yeah. the San Antonio Spurs, I, I like them from being a kid because I like David Robinson because all my friends oh. were, you know, Jordan fans. And so I wanted to like be different, but also root for somebody who I thought wow, was like so a you chose, classy guy. So I took Robinson. David Robinson. Yeah. And, wow. uh, yeah, then, and the Spurs draft Tim Duncan and then it's over. And yeah, I my brother that. was a Barkley fan for that reason. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. oh, he's different, and he's loud and brash Crazy. and fun, and yeah. I, that's why I, I like him. You can have Jordan, and I was already a Jordan fan. I was like, right. whatever. I don't care. <laughs> but to Zach, the other way. You won. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I made, a, I made a choice. As soon as I started watching basketball, he was the best thing on. I be, instantly right. became a fan because I was young. But I have that thing that, that I'm always reminded of because when I'm watching, I still like just naturally root for upsets. It's yes, how, of course. how my mind works. I am an underdog in life, but it's like you watch things, and I'm still pulling for the upset, but I will have to check myself sometimes because do I really want to see this team win? Yeah. Am I, do I want to see this team ruin greatness potentially? Because I remember pulling for the Utah Jazz initially, watching those series oh, with the yeah, Bulls. Yeah. And then I look back on it and I'm like, God, man, if Jordan, the, it, like, if he doesn't get that, because I saw that, st- everybody mm-hmm. saw that steal mm-hmm. of Carl Malone happening in slow motion, oh, yeah. except for Carl Malone. Robman's got him, you know, yeah. occupied and he just yep. comes right along the baseline and swipes it out. Yeah. It's just crazy to think, like, if the Jazz had beaten them in that series, what are we talking about? Uh, yeah, I thought you know, this. I thought as far the as the, Suns, him versus LeBron, I thought the Suns were the closest to ever. Yeah, come close. The to Suns, I would have been fine with as with a fan. Barkley and Seattle. Those are the other two teams. Yeah, I was like, you know what? I like oh, your team. Yeah. I like the way you play. If you win, this sucks. I don't ever want to lose. But right. I don't mind Utah. I never wanted. That I never Payton thought they were going to win. Man, Sean, oh, Kemp? Uh, yeah. Gary Payton, Payton and Kemp. Ridiculous. GP could jaw like no one. GP was the first. My first exposure to actual trash talking was Payton. Like seeing a master yeah. at work. And plus, he was just. Always seemed like he was chewing on something. Yeah, just his jaw was moving at all times. Even when he wasn't talking, you're like, this guy just talks shit. Shit, I remember when he played for Oregon State. Like I remember watching that guy's a beaver. Yeah, I I was like, this guy, like Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd stood out for me when he played at Cal. I'm like, this is a guy I'm going to watch in the NBA for years to come. And you could do that back then. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you have no idea. But back then, you could really pick them out new almost instinctively. All right, Matt, what was your favorite best? Like, which of the Bulls teams I would imagine is your favorite? They're all my babies. They're all come on. They're you all gotta my pick babies. one of the six. Yeah. They're all my babies. When did Stop. you when did you come into consciousness? Okay, that's of fair. What was happening in Chicago? Like, do you remember? Yeah, were you a fan before the Jordan? The Bulls? Oh, and, well, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. I've been a fan of Jordan since I started watching basketball. Okay, when he came into the league, I was already a fan. Okay, he became my number one. I just, but I was. My brother was a Cubs fan, so I was already tangentially a Cubs fan uh, because he was the coolest guy in the world. And right. then also, my brother was a Cowboys fan. And the first year I watched football, the Bears won the Super Bowl. Mm, so I instantly became a, a Bears fan. And they curb stomped Dallas mm-hmm. that season. So I was like, I love this team to death. <laughs> so well, it's all kind of, they yeah. all became Chicago. So I've been a Chicago guy my whole life yeah. as far as sports is concerned. I just, those are my three teams. I've watched them every year. Well, not the Cubs anymore right. for the most part. But Can you tell me which of the six Bulls teams was the best? Oh, that's a good Was question. it 73 or 72 70, and 10? Yeah. You think that was the best one? Best iteration. I mean, think about it. We, you go back and, and, sure. and watch them. They were just so built perfectly for the the rules at the time mm-hmm. and the offense and defensive schemes and the personnel and everything like that. It was nobody was touching them. Yeah, it's one of those impressive things. It's like the, the Lakers in the early two thousands. The playoffs almost went perfect. The team is just humming on all cylinders. Because that was the team that beat the the Sonics, right? The seventy two. Oh, no, no, that, that was the that Jazz. Was, 
I, I think it was the first full year of Jordan back, and that's why my answer. I can't believe I'm blanking on this. my answer to the question is back from that's baseball. The, yeah, is yeah. whatever it, the best Bulls team is the team. It was the ninety six ninety seven. I want to say yeah, where Michael Jordan had the most to prove is I think the best Bulls team, and that was his first full year back because you know Penny had that steal in the Bayern, playoffs the year Utah before. Utah Jazz, yeah, it was Utah, and uh, and then God, they I can't believe yeah. I blanked on that. It was but, Portland and Utah in the first go round. Then it was Portland and the Sonics the first. Three go rounds. No, it went. Uh, it went Lakers. Lakers. Oh, Lakers the Lakers was the right. very first with the hand switch. That's yeah, yeah, right. The that Lakers was the iconic. Yep. On that hand switch. Yeah. yeah. Lakers. Uh, Blazers. Blazers. Uh-huh. That and was the six. That was the the shrug game. The yes. shrug series. Yeah. He went off from three point yep. lane in the first half and just turned to the announcers. Was like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I love that. It, it, it upsets me to no end when I see like people just use the the crying Jordan, the meme. meme oh, yeah. Because wow. I love that. I love the shrug meme. Uh, there's so many other Jordan memes you yeah. could. Yeah, and I know that they're used for very different reasons. But like, <laughs> I don't want to see Mike cry. Yeah, I don't want to see him be human. I want to see him be a psychopathic killer. Well, at the, the end problem of the is game. that's the humanity I didn't want to see, and that's what I've seen. <laughs> yeah. So the crying Jordan, just like you know what? At least it's something different. It, it paints a more than that Hall of Fame picture. speech. Yeah, did that Hall of Fame speech is... Did you hear there's like a 10-part or 5-part or something documentary series? They've been holding off on for years on now. On Jordan, yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's going to come out on Netflix, I think, next What? Year. Yeah. Oh. I, I think... Yeah, they just announced, they just, uh, announced it. Yeah, if OJ gets seven hours, f- fucking I'm, Jordan deserves yeah. way more than that. I mentioned it on Movie Talk for that reason <laughs> because I'm so excited about it. Yeah. It's also like, okay, let's see what Jordan's done in his career slash life versus what OJ. Right. OJ off the field, he's probably got Jordan, um, but... <laughs> <laughs> Jordan on the court. Yeah. I mean, I just I want to see what the best thing I've ever seen about Jordan. And really, to go back to the Dream Team token one yeah. is that Dream Team documentary yeah. where they talk about yeah. the games in Monte Carlo. Yep, the practices that they had Monte Carlo where it where Chuck Daly's like, "All right, uh, y'all pick your five, and I'm just gonna sit back and watch this." What I would not oh, give to f- get in a DeLorean oh, and yeah. just watch the that collegiate happen. game where the oh, college yeah. kids won. Yeah. That they didn't allow the media into. I think that's the way it was. And then Chuck allowed the media in afterwards. And you could tell they were kind of pissed off and whatnot. And the next day there was a video camera and they just they smoked the living shit out of it. <laughs> yeah. But they were just complacent. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of yeah, top. I, look, I would love the Jordan uh, documentary if we spend an hour on the gambling. If we spend Ooh. an hour on what were the motivations, why did you go to baseball? Why did you really retire? Right, right. I think if we actually get that, go, I will you, love it. Do you subscribe to the Simmons theory that he knows? Stern was going to suspend him, so they made a deal for him it to leave for a year? It doesn't make sense. Why would the league do that? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't subscribe to it either. Yeah, it seems, but, but, it's, I, but I love the theory. Yeah, the game, it's fun how, to talk like about. How much? How, how wild has it gotten? Will right. you be honest with this? Well, yeah, it's they a great all, conspiracy theory. They all said this, right, that he is – he gambles about – Everything and it's he hates to fucking. Scotty He's says that over and over. The again. most competitive yeah. human that maybe ever walked the face of the earth, right? You know, and that's that's why I am a Kobe Bryant fan too, because Kobe is the closest thing that we've gotten as far as that kind of mentality. Now, yeah. now, now Kobe yeah. didn't master it the way Jordan did, right? Um, but Kobe has that similar competitive drive. I hate Kobe. Yeah, he right. just I don't know. Okay. He was like Jordan in too many ways that aren't the best of ways. Right. 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 That's the problem. That's a fair point. Yeah. Uh, I would say my favorite college team was the Fat Five. They're, nothing will beat that team. 91 and 92. Nothing will beat that team. Even though they both lost. Uh, they both lost. They find, lost the finals both times. It still was the greatest. They changed my life, that team. Like, I, I, at the time, I was working as a uh, front desk reception as a Hilton down in Tyson's Corner. And I would sneak off on Saturdays upstairs to check the rooms and watch first halves and second halves of the game. That is a genius. I never thought about that working at a hotel where you can say, I'm going to go check the rooms and then just chill in a nice hotel suite for hours. Yeah. I, you'd have to you'd have to break it up. So you'd have to go if I'm if they're playing a great team, I'll go and watch the second half. If they're oh, playing a, if they're playing a shit team, then I'll go and watch the first half because I know they'll run it up. <laughs> and so right. for me, those are, that's how I scheduled it. I mean, basketball was my obsession for so long. College ball, I would lose jobs over on being unable to take two weeks off for the tournament. Like I was so obsessed back then. Nowadays, not anymore because it isn't like what we said earlier. Like it isn't like it used to be. But I used to like I would get the books and I would read like who's mm-hmm. on the teams and the, the. I mean, I would love that. Uh, do the March Madness things. All of that was the greatest, man. But. Uh, professionally, 
being a Bullets Wizards fan is not a cheer for. So uh, the early Lakers teams, the one where Magic came back after they'd lost to the Celtics and they called Magic, like he, he was the reason they were, like he was too selfish, Hollywood, all this kind of shit. When he came back and he changed his game and adjusted his game to play with Showtime, man, that was my favorite team ever to play basketball. And yeah, I would have to say the Jordan 72 center, that that team with Rodman and Scotty and what they were able to do was it was a was it yeah. uh, Wennington was it the, oh, Luke oh, Longley yeah. Luke Longley was yeah. that you had time, Longley right? and Wennington Coo yeah. coach yeah Coo coach. coach yeah uh, Kerr I think yeah, Kerr yeah, Kerr, Steve Kerr. Right. Right. Um, replacing the Paxson <laughs> and starring as John Paxson Steve Kerr, <laughs> Steve Kerr. <laughs> Was B.J. Armstrong on those teams? No. Yeah, he was done at that point. It was a fr- Ron Harper. It was Ron Harper. No. Harper was there. That's right. Har- I think Harper was gone the last the – last, when Jordan came back, I think Harper had moved on. No, no, no. Harper no. came in the second yeah. uh, iteration. B.J. had moved on after the BJ first B.J. had moved on. So did like Craig Hodges, Stacey King, yes, Bill Stacey Cartwright. King. Right. Uh, Horace Grant. Bill Cartwright. Uh, I'm trying to think. So in the second iteration, yeah, Jim Buford or uh, Jay Buford. What was it? fuck was his name? Oh, yeah. Uh, that guy. Brown-haired white guy. Yeah, the Rodman cheerleader. I forget um, what his name was. Yeah, Randy right. Brown. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Judd Bushler was the Judd Bushler. The there you go. <laughs> I can't believe it. Bushler. Bushler. I also think Phil got better as a coach. Yeah, like I the think first so. three ga- uh, championships, those were dri- those, that was driven by Jordan, right? And the last three championships, I felt like uh, Phil made different changes to that team, and and his schemes were so much more complex than when he was playing these different. So I, I think I, you I think had that, to be a better coach because Jordan was a harder player to coach after he won yes. a championship for no other yeah. reason than just because Jordan realized that his way works, right? Winning championships, and so imposing that way on the other, the rest of the roster in the second run of Jordan, yeah. probably became a little more uh, sharpened. <laughs> if you ask Steve well, Kerr's face, for lack of a better term, yeah. 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 Well, him and Pippen have been there for the entire run. But Yeah. I remember the Jordan rules of Sam Smith. I remember that being a big deal. Yeah. I remember uh, the SI cover. Yeah. That's right. Right. All right. Anyway, we should get into this. We've been talking a lot of basketball. Now let's talk about these basketball movies. Talk golf movies. Uh, <laughs> Matt, do you want to tell them how the show works? Yeah. Once we set a topic, the three of us go our individual ways. And we show back up here. The way it works on a three-man, did he? Well, it doesn't matter. I'll do my bottom five. Look, I showed up. No. St- I'll do my <laughs> bottom five. He'll do his bottom five. You do your bottom five. Roger that. I do my next three, three, three. Then we trade one apiece. And once we've revealed our personal top ten list, we create the shows between the three of yeah, us. Yeah, we'll combine it at the end. I like that. That's cute. It's like there's a two-pointer, a three-pointer, and a five-pointer, mm-hmm. which we'll probably have in the NBA by 2020. <laughs> it does. It helps you weight it at the end. We don't really think of it in numeric assigned value, mm-hmm. but it does. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so if I bring something at ten and you've got it at six, but it's in that bottom five, we'll talk about it. Right. Unless he has it higher, and he'll tell us to punt, which means hold it. Yeah. Roger that. Okay. Yeah. And if he doesn't have it at all, then we're talking about it. Right. Uh, all right. And, you want to start us off? So number 10. So, uh, All right. I'm just going to get right in because we've been shitting, shooting the shit on basketball for a yeah, while. Yeah. I chose one that is a technicality uh, because it's one of the most fun, basketball. Oh. Anybody? I took. I didn't let it because of the technicality. Because techni- yeah. it isn't legitimately basketball, purely basketball. Well, they start on a basketball court. It's a hybridized. It's a bullshit like, technicality because I like it better than – Five or six others that all kind of follow the same formula. Right. I know exactly what I'm getting in this movie, and I don't care. Whereas this, at least, is something different. It's entertaining. Mm. In the scene alone where uh, Matt and Terry are going back and forth just saying dude to each other, and yeah. you understand the context yes. of what they're saying as they're doing it. Like, he gets offended. Dude. 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 And just the back and forth. You f- you understand everything those two characters are saying. It's so impressive to see yeah. boiled down to it's actually the emotion that they're conveying and not the word itself. It's like, wow. And then it goes right back to dick jokes. It's probably Jenna McCarthy's best work, I would say. Okay. As an actress. Sure. Right. I have never seen basketball. What? But I, be, my, my knowledge of the movie is such that I think that totally will, would count as a basketball movie. Maybe more so than a baseball movie, yeah. but... The the reason why I have an affinity for it is one a of movie you've never two seen? reasons. Yes, because of the classic Bob Costas so line, you're excited, old. feel these nipples. <laughs> yeah. And then also because I think maybe even more than uh, than the dodgeball announcers, which Chris and I get compared to often on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's more like a basketball kind of thing, too, because you have – two different kind of levels that Chris and I can vacillate between when we're calling a match. So it's as much basketball as it is dodgeball. 
Yeah, you're, you, you guys are interesting to me when, I, when you call matches. I'm always listening to you guys call matches. It's very I interesting. I know you are. Yeah, I just, I it's very right interesting. you're right behind the curtain. Because <laughs> I always see judging, how far, by the way, <laughs> judging. How far Ellis pushes versus how Christian's like determined to get this train on the track. Ellis is always opening doors going, what's in here? What's in here? Yeah, well, let's have fun. And it's fun. What's going as, on the, as the commissioner, he's got like 38 different things <laughs> to do. Like, like, like he's thinking about the pregame and the postgame and all right. that stuff. And I'm just like, man, I can't wait to see some movie trivia. <laughs> How long do you think until he's bald? You know what I mean? <laughs> just the stress of schmo down at year five or six. And he's just got a huge, he's got the Murray with just the tiny little, tiny little plop coming off the front. And the rest is The beginning fading. of like season six, he's just going to look like an exiting president. Yeah. <laughs> he's just so aged. We do the side by side photo and you're like, wow, this put decades on him. It. It's like yeah. the Lincoln shot before and then after the Civil War. Yeah. And he looks 50 years older. Fucking... Is basketball something you would recommend? Like you know my yeah, sense look, of humor pretty well. If if you yes, did you like Orgasmo? Uh, never saw that one either. Okay, did you I, like the South Park? I, movie? I like this better than Orgasmo. Orgasmo's uh, it's got yeah. some really good parts. Orgasmo's got, kind of raw. Yeah, it's got some other parts that are just like okay, mm. the hamster style, whatever the fuck that was. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, but not in the. <laughs> It's the plucky heart of both movies, but yeah. especially in basketball. Right. Come on, guys. And they treat him like shit the whole movie, too. Yeah. It's like, you know, stuff meant a locker type of hijinks. Butters. Yeah. 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 And uh, I do love South Park. Yeah. Well, good. What's your number nine? Uh, my number nine is Blue Chips. Oh, hell no. It is on my list. I'm sorry. I don't mean to react that way. It is on my list. Is it higher, is it higher than, than six? It is. Six. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Yeah. All right. Okay. That's fine. That is called a punt. I'm, I'm sorry. Did you watch that movie two days ago? No, not two days because ago. Because I did. I watched it when it came out of theaters. Yeah, uh, I saw it in theaters, I think, twice. And then I've seen it probably three times since, four times since. That's where I honed my Nick Nolte impression. My number eight is Coach Carter. Ooh, I didn't make my list. Did not make my list, but one of my first jobs in uh, in entertainment uh, was moving out here, and I did crowd warm up for the basketball, uh, the high school basketball scenes. Where was the shot? Uh, I think downtown LA somewhere at a court, and it was me and Skippy Simon. Skippy Simon. Skippy Simon. You know and, Skip? Um, it's the greatest stand up name I've ever heard since Bill Zaney. That is a. It great, is a good stand up name, right? Skippy yeah. Simon. I and, just. Um, yeah. How? how... <laughs> I mean, I guess his jokes. If, if but what can he do other well, than be Skippy at that point? When you are when you're a young comic, you're like, oh yeah, I guess I'll do, I'll be doing stand up. I'll do like a set in front of these people. Right. Then you get there, you're like, this is crowd warm up. You throw a lot of candy and free t shirts into the crowd. Yeah, that's all they up. care about. So Skippy you just get is stand there up. and d- yeah. deliver dry one liners. But I got a lot of free uh, swag from MTV. Like I got oh, like nice. I got tons of shirts, and that was like pretty exclusively what I wore on stage for the next three years. <laughs> what do you make? Say it ain't so. Back then, I don't. Can you say t-shirts? I, I think the statute of limitations <laughs> is bad. Yeah, you get t-shirts Fair. launch, and I think I got a couple hundred. That's nice for the day. I, it was just one day. That's interesting. So yeah, it's a so. non-union uh, gig at that yeah. point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. But for an MTV production mm. with huh. Sam Jackson shooting in LA, yeah. Um, yeah. But I remember how they had it like all like like it was a silent gym, and then they just had this one section that was just like they packed with fans yeah. to be roaring for the scenes. And Samuel L. Jackson, he showed up and and he films the scenes, and then he just he takes off like all the extras are there, like even some <laughs> of the other actors like around. And Sam Jackson shows up, leaves. Goodbye, motherfuckers. It's like you really realize what the pecking order is oh, on, yeah. on a movie set. Very oh, of quickly. course. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I uh, only so, show up to do uh, Coach Carter. I like it because it subverts the expectation that you normally have. Right, and. The overall message is, you know, growth outside of becoming an adult, becoming a man and a person within society is greater than whatever you're going to do on this court. Yeah. So this can help facilitate that growth. And what are the chances that you even make the league? Like, you can have that goal. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't don't let that side uh, track or derail everything else that you're trying to do with yourself. To teach that lesson and then show in a scroll at the end, like so and so went and played four years here. They had like five or six guys play college ball. I mm-hmm. love those in sports movies. Yeah, it's just like you know what they didn't go and play ten years in the league and do something right. else, but right. they had solid lives for themselves. And this guy went off and did this and mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z. And perhaps it was the influence of him coming in and just setting rules for them and having guidelines and be like, no, this you, there needs to be accountability. Right. And that is the lesson. It's a good coach, you know. Yeah, uh, and I like it for that. It just as opposed to. Another movie that may be on your list, and we'll get to it. Uh, other things that just like you know, as soon as you're walking into it, this is exactly the arc of this movie. Whereas this, I didn't know. Right. Oh, it's going to do this little. Yeah, it's it's nice that it, it's a lesser known story and a lesser known coach. Yeah, 
knew and, nothing of it before I saw the movie. Right. It's based on a true story, but it's not like a very famous true story that right. we it's a all have heard of. Yeah. Right. It's something on the news cycle for like two days. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that was my eight, my seven, Space Jam. Uh, not on my list. Uh, that is my number seven as well. Look at you. That's called a handshake. <laughs> That's called a handshake. And he didn't make it, uh, he didn't deem it worthy for his list. It really isn't. But yes, um, I'm going to go turn the AC on. You guys talk about it. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, why don't you go see if you can find a uh, sense of humor and maybe some fun inside your cold, dead heart. For Space Jam. Is it Coach Carter? Is it going to teach you life lessons? No, but it's Michael Jordan and I, Bill Murray and a bunch of Looney Tunes. I, ex- I expect his now is going to be like a Basketball Diaries or potentially for Love and Basketball. I will guarantee you the fish that saved Pittsburgh is in there somewhere. I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to put it on the list. I just I saw that and I saw another movie that uh, did not make my list. Um, <laughs> it's a fast break because I, I I can't I just can't I can't remember if I saw that movie I think it's actually a good movie and Gabe Kaplan gives like a good performance and it's got a lot of like racial undertones but I just can't so Space Jam yeah that's that's my generation that's it, it is it is I was at the height of I was probably like three years too old for it to have its maximum peak effectiveness because <clears> I was a little bit older I'd started watching basketball early on and so by the time this comes out which is what 1996 Six. yeah yeah, I am 17, 16, right. somewhere in that ballpark. So it doesn't – had I been 12, I would have been – just like the Gatorade Be Like Mike, I sang that song to myself. I did, did like chores and stuff. Oh, sure. Sometimes yeah. I dream that he is me. And just like – I still remember the action Got sequences. Got to see that's how I dream to be. Bum, 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 bum. So, and yeah. then I'm just like, ah, why doesn't the Admiral have more commercial? <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorite basketball shirts that I've got, one of uh, all my vintage ones, is an Admiral's uh, uh, David Robinson. Really? There's another one that I really want. My brother had it as a kid, and I always loved it. I have not seen you sport that. Hang on while I take it. It's a blue one. Okay, so we knew this was happening before. Hey, this is Mark. Uh, John stepped out to deal with AC, the AC. This is how unprofessional this fucking show is. Uh, great. My, Ellis uh, my currently is, is gonna run on the phone with Grubhub. Thank you so much. He's on the phone with Grubhub. He told us Bye-bye. beforehand, i got to take this call. i got food coming in, guys. Food coming in hot. I can't deny done. myself this. Ordered food for a friend in my building. Oh, look at you. Oh, make me feel like shit for making fun of you, and it's for someone else. Well, yeah, and, you know. You're I'm such just, a generous individual. That's all I've ever said about you. This was, this was the right time for Roka to go fix the AC. <laughs> it was the perfect time to not have this. I, the faults that people have with it, I thoroughly understand, and yet I give a complete you know, pass to because it's Michael Jordan for me. It is, and it's just fu- it, and it's, there, there's genuinely funny moments, too, like, like when they're playing golf. All right. Sure. I love Bill Murray hitting a shot, and then they're like, oh, good shot, Bill. And he's like, yeah, i give you guys something to shoot at. Like, he's, he's doing them a favor by being there. Uh, Larry Bird's not white. He's clear. There's some good lines in that movie, yeah. as well as the Looney Tunes silliness. And that was, like, that was peak. The Looney Tunes had already come back in a big way. Like, everybody's wearing, like, Tweety Bird and Marvin the Martian shirts. And then that movie just amplified it more. So I was a big fan of wearing Looney Tunes garb, very oversized. And then also when Space Jam came out. It's just it's another what? thing where it's like I, it's the Uncle Drew thing. I love watching NBA players be mm. in movies. Did I you, think it's fun. Did you gravitate towards one character in particular, or is it you were fine with the menagerie of Looney Tunes? No. Were you like a I, the Tasmanian Devil guy, a, Marsh, a Marvin the Martian? The greatest Looney Tune to me of all time is um, the, the greatest episode or the greatest sketch Ooh. is actually the Singing Frog, which is weird because oh. it's not like a famous Looney Tune character. Yeah. Bugs Bunny, obviously, with carrots, him and I see things you know the same way. In life, <laughs> but Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century. Dude, it's great. With Daffy Duck going against Marvin the Martian yep. was probably my favorite. Which one is the one where it's the mad scientist and he's got the big, tall, hairy yeah, thing? Yeah, with the ether. That could be my favorite one. Yeah, he's like, yeah. that thing gets up getting shaved. Yeah. He's he he doing the nails. Mm-hmm. There's like that Dracula yeah. female in another one and she keeps running yes. off and there's something like little, I don't know what those are. Oh, yeah, the, the, little, the hair pins that yeah, are Yeah, hair pins. Around. There you yeah. go. Bobby pins. <laughs> yeah, Bobby pins. <laughs> Come uh, back. Yeah, I would say Space Jam a, a worthy entry in a, in any top ten. My list. question has always been, how do they hit upon whatever NBA stars? Because you have mm. like, okay, Charles is my friend, Patrick, but then right. Sean Bradley, uh, Muggsy Bogues. They might have been all under his br- like Nike. 
They might have been all under Nike. Sean, well, I, they had better than Sean Bradley and under Nike. I think yeah, you also but, answered your own question with, with with Sean Bradley being such a freakishly tall athlete. I think that's it's yeah the uniqueness and, and him Muggsy, and Muggsy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and 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 Muggsy. I mean, we've seen Muggsy show up. A Wake Forest graduate, by the way. Oh boy, uh, we've seen you know Muggsy show up in in other things like he's in that Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. Oh yeah, uh, Larry David's taking a leak next to him, yes. and he wants to look down to see what Muggsy Bogues is packing, and he just it, Muggsy Bogues is packing. <laughs> of course he is. Of course he is. Well, I think it's a terrible movie. That's why I didn't put it on my list. But I Listen, respect I think the, the AC is not working. Both. I it think is, the AC is not working. I, I feel, feel nothing. I can feel it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, all right. Let's move on to uh, this. My number six, and the final of my bottom five, hey. is Semi-Pro. The Will Ferrell one? Yeah. Oh, my wow. goodness. Okay. Whoa. It's You're talking about a swing and a miss. Oh, see, I love the basketball parts of it. All the stupidity there. Okay. I don't the Woody Harrelson. Yeah, that's a weird. That's where I'm like, I don't give two shits what this movie is doing at this yeah. point. Let's get back to the stupidity insanity of Will Ferrell trying to drum up ideas to get people in. Every one of those. And the fact that his wife is like cheating on him. I with that's Woody. one of those of I didn't mind the wig this time. I wish they just stayed with the wig <laughs> the whole time as right. opposed to they assumed we as a populace were sick of the wigs. So he was only part of a greater story. Like, no, no, no. This is when you guys should have fucking leaned into the punch and made it 100% that because I think that was vastly more interesting to me. Yeah, I find those parts so rewatchable that it rates that highly on my list. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I like the comedy in those. I, no, I, I, I thought that that was such a misfire. It's not like a horrific comedy. Mm. There's laughs to be had in it for sure. The, uh, the scene where they're all playing poker and passing around the gun. Like, that, yeah. That's okay. a very funny sequence. But I just feel like that if you look at somebody's potential in basketball and you look at somebody who didn't live up to their potential, yeah. this is like the Harold Miner of movie like like what we thought this movie could be. <laughs> Still though, what was Harold Miner? Exciting in a dunk competition. What's, That's exactly what this movie you, is. It should have been all dunk competition. You is that give baby me Jordan? Will Ferrell. Is that baby yeah, Jordan? Yeah. One, yeah, you give me Will Ferrell, Woody Harrelson, a bunch of uh comedy players from the world of sketch yeah. comedy yeah. and SNL. UCB and stuff. That movie should be fall down hilarious it's if because, they're all involved in an ABA movie and it was not. The Harrelson detour, they needed to give that it some sort weird. of humanity, like sometimes sports films feel they need to. Yeah. And it's just like, this This is not this is not how you do this. You don't bring, like, steak and ice cream and combine them into one fucking meal. Yeah. The ads for that movie were funny, though. Oh, I don't remember the trailers. I never see trailers. It, no, no, no. I mean, the ads, like, it was either Old Spice or Heineken or something. Oh, yeah. Will Where he was just Jackie the... whatever, yeah. Jackie yeah. Robinson Jr., yeah. or whatever ridiculous yeah. 70s disco name he had. Uh, I'll Jackie take, Moon. That's Jackie was, Moon. Yeah. Jackie Moon. I'll take yeah. Blades of Glory over that. Uh, Blades of Glory. I hate uh, Blades, Blades of Glory. Blades of Glory is pretty unwatchable. Oh, really? <laughs> I hate Blades Talk of Glory. Talk about leading into the joke. That's all they do that's, the whole Yeah, thing. but I found the joke just pathetic. Oh, wow. Like, that one seemed tired to me. Whereas what? this, The potential of this, because the ABA... Yeah. It's all it's like minor league baseball, the amount of promotions and stuff right. that you could get, I want to see that. I want to get on the bus with them and go to the next and see the other town's shitty version of that. Right. Semi pro they were trying to make a movie with semi pro Blades of Glory. It's like we have a bunch of funny people, we assume it's gonna be Yeah, good. and right. figure skating, men in figure skating it's costumes. Like, Craig T. Nelson as the coach is really funny. Uh, yeah. Craig T. Nelson's great in everything. Yeah. Well it's true. Was 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 uh, Bob Costas in, in the semi I don't remember if he was in no, semi pro. Uh, the announcer I think was Andy Daly, the okay. house announcer. Because that's and where he got his start. Yeah. Andy Richter Daly. In the ABA. Was the manager Richter was in it. I can't. Yeah, uh, Andre three thousand. Okay. Um, I want to uh, say Tim Meadows was in there. No. Oh uh, no, Tim. I thought, maybe I in thought a he tiny cameoed. Bit part. Yeah. And then uh, Chris Parnell, I think cameoed. Parnell makes sense. Yeah. Did you like the? Did you ever see the ABA documentary? Was it the Thirty for Thirty? I think they did on ABA or something no. they did on the ABA. Man, that's a good doc. If you ever find the ABA doc, really? that is a phenomenal watch. I Just believe it. In, Shit, the, how enjoyable it was. What was it? Was. The Spirit of St. Louis finally gave up their uh, television rights in the past year, year yeah. and a half. Yeah. And that's been generating so. Cause a million a year. When the NBA wanted to take all the ABA, they fought for, we want whatever, 5% of future TV right. rights every year. And the NBA was like, whatever. Yeah. We're not making dick on TV. Right. So the family has owned the rights to that. Up until like a year ago. So every multi-million or billion dollar contracts, they're getting a certain percentage of that. It's probably not 5%, but still. It's like buying Google, man. It's fucking ridiculous. I don't know why you'd ever sell it. Uh, but that hasn't gone down to the players in the in the ABA. <laughs> because the players, no, there's like a Reggie Miller thing set up a charity yeah. for ABA oh, players. Oh, I, I believe that. Yeah, no surprise. So if you played in the ABA in the 70s because you just got like all of a sudden your league was no longer there. It, yeah, right. Got liquidated. That, that actually makes semi-pro more resonant because – 
all these guys who were professional basketball players who once you have two mm. leagues and all of a sudden you have one league, there's all these fringe athletes. Like, not everybody's Dr. J. Right. They're just yeah, going to no. be like, oh, okay, I'll go dominate this league. Right. Oh, it's yeah. like they were hanging on. And so if they, if they couldn't play basketball anymore, uh, Reggie Miller set up a, uh, a charity organization mm. that, like, donates money to those guys that played in the NBA. That's, that's, why, nice. yeah. that's why he likes Tim Duncan and David Robinson. He's got a gold. Right. He's got a gold. He's a heart of gold. This motherfucker. That Ellis. usually, when someone is so overtly public about that, they're guarding some deep, yeah, dark, deep, disgusting dark secret. secret. Yeah, yeah. You are a comedian, so they, that I know that to be true on some level. There's <laughs> something. I just like nice things, and it's, it's even colder down here, guys. <laughs> it's so cool. I think everybody floats. Who's <laughs> hands where everybody floats? Uh, all, right, all right. What do you got to tell? All right. So my number ten is the fish that saved Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> We talked about yeah. it when you're out of the room. Yeah. No yeah. fucking chance that was making my list. <laughs> Say, it, Jack, what's up, buddy? There's Great. a DJ. I'm telling charming. you, man, this '70s film, for whatever the fucking reason, just just is one of the funniest things for me. Whenever I catch it, so weird, so outlandish. Metal Arc Lemon. I think Dr. J's in this thing. Stalker oh, Channing, he's the star of this thing. Yeah, Stalker, Stalker Channing. Channing plays the like the woman that has the. She's the the what she's the what do you call those people? Psychic. Like, psychic, psychic. Yeah, that they have to play on. Yeah. The, 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 the whole team is all Pisces or something. It's, so, it's so fucking hilarious. Oh. So for me, it's so ridiculous that it works. And the guy who's trying to figure out his, how to do the free throw correctly, like all these yeah, crazy uh, things. Set shot or yeah, the set shot, shot or exactly. whatever. So because the, the team is like not doing well, and it's going to fall apart. And then they bring in the psychic, and it kind of works out. And now they all then they then they start to taste fame. And what happens to them when they taste fame? When they like just been it, losing all this time? Like oh, you throw that into the mix. So all of that is just for me. It's just enjoyable to go back and watch it. And some of these seventies like kind of free fringe sports movies like Bingo Long and the Traveling All-Stars. I have a special soft place in my heart for those because I would watch them on Saturday afternoons when I had nothing else to do. Um, I have a question. What was it like watching James Naismith weave that first peach basket? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that son of a bitch wanted to put it eight feet. I said, you got to put it ten. You You got to put it ten. ten? Good for you. Good for you. Make it a challenge. Who can't make an eight-footer? The Roka that saved basketball. What were you doing in Kansas? That's the bigger question. Someone's got to do the gardening. It was me, of course. I'm wow, Latino. Even, I'm even, the Latino. What do you expect? Oh, man. Early 1900s Kansas. <laughs> There's still somebody there. The hedges look good, Mr. Naismith. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, those are those things that, like, um, I just didn't really enjoy the, the kitsch of that film for whatever reason. And whenever I catch it, when it randomly comes on on, like, one network or something, one of those networks that are just way down the, the bottom of the dial. Pittsburgh? Oh, yeah. You'll see it on ESPN Classic. Yeah, every yeah. once in a while, right? Are you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so then my number nine is another one of my favorite, my favorite like, 80s fringe type, Fast Break. With Boom. Gabe Kaplan. Yeah, that's another. We were talking about that when you were gone. Yeah, you, not, and you guys didn't put it in? Nope. God. I had it right on the edge. And okay. I, I could put it in there instead of my number 10. I just want number 10 to be different because I know nobody else is going to have it on their list. Fair enough. I still remember DC Daisy is in that, like, is the name of the character. Like, and I remember Kaplan coming out of Welcome Back Caught. I was such a fan of that show to see him take this on and everything that happened. Like, it was my first exposure to what the hell weed was. I had no idea. I was like 12 when I saw it. I didn't know what okay. weed was. And then you see the whole thing where they're going and they're trying to eat it and they're trying to, like, smoke it and throw it out the windows so and don't get caught by the cops. But this whole story is interesting because it's an understo- underdog story. This guy wants to coach. No one wants to give him a shot to coach. He's in New York. He's got his wife who's always trying to tell him to go do something else instead of being a basketball coach, but he loves basketball so much. So he takes the only job he's offered, which is kind of like Hoosiers in this small town way out. I don't remember what. New Mexico, I think. I think New Mexico, yeah. yeah. So he's down there, and he has to learn how to put a team together. Mm-hmm. And because he knows all these people that were like either dropped out of college or dropped out of high school or whatever, they still have eligibility. And so he goes and finds them, and some of them are like dealing drugs, some of them are like doing crime, some of those kind of stuff. One is a woman who dresses as a man so that she can play ball because she can play as good as any dude, but I won't ever get a chance. So you get all these different crazy characters together, and he makes it, and you get Red Brown, like Mr. Captain America, the original Captain America, Red Brown, in this thing. And so you put them all together, and you have him like build that team up, and 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 then they challenge the main like state team that's supposed to be unbeatable, and they play him in a game, and he proves himself to his wife and to his mom, and all this. And so to me. It just it just is a fun movie to enjoy. So that's why I put it where it is. And it's all about basketball, which I love. Uh, number eight is Teen Wolf. Is that on anybody's list? I, it wasn't a basketball. I, it is a it's basketball, a basketball movie, movie. But it's not a basketball movie to me. If, what, basketball is a basketball, basketball movie? Basketball. I know. Well, because, I mean, yeah, but, but they're on a court the whole time, like 90% of that movie. Whereas Teen Wolf, movie. basketball, they only are on the court, you know. 
in certain very specific sections, but it's not like they exist. 90% of the story gets told on this but court. But that's where he finds his confidence is being able to play ball. That's where he – like when he becomes the, the wolf and that's where he becomes popular as being the, the leader of the, of the basketball team and yeah. being so and amazing And he decides not it. to be the wolf in himself to prove right, that right. he could do it without that. I, I get it. It's the fulcrum of it all for me. That's what I enjoyed about it. That's why I call it that way. And, and it's not my favorite Michael J. Fox movies. Uh, one of my favorite I Michael J. Fox movies. I love it as a kid. Yeah, as a kid. As yeah. you get older. It worked it? really well and him doing the handstand. Or was that the Bateman one that followed up? Oh, well, doing no, a handstand no, no. on the truck going that past. Was, uh, that was Michael, was Michael J. Yeah. Fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah like I showing off. I saw Teen Wolf a lot. <laughs> See? I and it's not Teen on your Wolf. list? A lot. Wow. Yeah, I've seen it. It's been years, but when I was a kid, it was on repeat quite a bit. I remember the fucking Saturday morning cartoon. And Styles. Based on it. Styles is great. Yeah. yeah. Styles is great. I never knew because I was so young that what Styles was trying to do at yeah. the uh, the liquor store. <laughs> I never realized he was trying to get like beer and like he was underage. He was yeah. using a fake ID. I never got it because we had the, the version we had uh, taped on VHS in our house was – it was taped off TV. Oh, and so they okay. edited out. The, the, I think there's an entire scene with Styles. They they yeah. edited out, but they also uh, like blurred out his shirt that said, "What are you looking at, Dick Nose?" And so I never knew he was wearing it. Then I remember seeing the movie like as an adult and seeing the "What are you looking at?" Thing. I'm like, "What? Where was that?" <laughs> this is the director's, this is cut director's cut that you're seeing. <laughs> yeah, really. The extended edition. What he wanted to put out, but the studio wouldn't let him. <laughs> Dick knows. Just one thing, one change. Dick knows. That's it. What I are st- you looking at, Dick knows? I still love that moment when uh, he re- when he becomes the were- in the bathroom and then opens the door and his dad's a werewolf and he goes, yeah. We have. I guess we have some things to talk about. <laughs> I Great. just what, love that moment. It instantly makes it softer because you yes. see him as a wolf and you're like, holy shit! And then you see your dad and be like, oh, that looks like a sad wolf. Yeah. He just looked like he wasn't. You know what I mean? He might be able to paw at a cow, but he's not able to <laughs> cut its throat it's anymore. A, it's a Christian Harloff season seven schmodown. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh boy. Ah, oh, he's gone the other sucks. way. The stress has been so much, he's just grown hair everywhere. <laughs> he actually becomes a werewolf. <laughs> he's, mad all, at, he's mad. He's mad. gray. <laughs> His eyes are jaundiced. <laughs> it's uh, fucking. Look, we can't keep playing past 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. <laughs> Christian becomes another person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got to cut the schmo down short here <laughs> today. He is aware. It's like just feed the Harloff and you're going to yeah, be okay. That's a good point. It's yeah. a good point. Uh, all right, so then my number seven, and Matt will probably have an issue with this as well, is it's tangential to basketball, is uh, forget Paris because um, uh, Billy Crystal is a ref. That's his job, and that's what takes him through this whole thing. And that's what the problem is in their relationship is that he's – he loves to be a referee, and he's always constantly traveling around, so it mm-hmm. causes friction in their relationship. Then when he stops being a referee, he's unhappy being at home because he can't ref, and his wife is now traveling around. So to me, it's, it's, it has to do a lot with – it has to do with basketball, maybe not as much as some of these other films, but it is connected to basketball. And it's one of my favorite romantic comedies of his, and Deborah Winger's great. And, and it's an unusual one because it starts off with the death of his father and him hating his father. Like he has this, which is which was prevalent in a lot of early Billy Crystal movies. Uh, mm-hmm. Memories of Me is about that as well. His issue with Alan King is his dad. So okay. I find this interesting, and I wonder if this was really true in his life. You know, to work this out because Mr. Saturday Night really focuses on his relationship with his mom, oh, the the female Mr. Mother. Saturday Night. Dude, that, that was movie's the, tough. That was oh. the popping of the bubble for Billy yeah, Crystal. That You're tough. talking to two comics yeah. about Mr. Saturday yeah. Night. I've seen that a lot of times too. Yeah, man, I, you, I've seen that you, every day when I close my eyes. <laughs> Because you want to believe that it's good. Like you want – you don't want to believe that Crystal's hubris was so big that he creates something like Mr. Saturday Night, which was such a it's, bitter yeah, film. He did that fucking jazz singer thing on Comic Relief. Oh, yeah. That That's when it was – that I, he started to lose his luster for me as a comedic character when he's starting to take himself like super serious mm. – Schmaltzy, oh. ah, da, da. can you dig it? I'm yeah, not gonna I give him it. too much guff okay. for anything you did on Comic Relief because like they were donating to the homeless at the time. But you know, it's like yeah. hey, we need a sketch, Billy. Let's do it because they all had like huge, it's so you know, movie star careers at the time. But yeah. I, I've always found Billy Crystal's care. I think Billy Crystal's a great uh, champion of comedy. Yeah. I think he's great at hosting the Oscars and he does a number of things. Very, I think he's a very good lead leading man mm-hmm. in movies. But his, uh, I always like thought that like his Muhammad Ali impression is like oh, whatever. Really, like, the only reason I thought it was good is because Muhammad Ali and him, yeah, he would, so would, much would play really? around with it. Oh, and then wow. the Sam yeah. and, and the You Look Marvelous. I just never found that funny. The which. In the slightest. Which one? You look marvelous. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, That yeah. was of a different generation, though. That's I, I chalk it up to that. Like, it, they weren't used yeah. to it. It's a standout character. Yeah, like, guys, I get it. I he get was it. big when I was. Like, None of my shit is going to be it. funny in two months. So <laughs> I give Billy Crystal all the credit in the world. 20 years later, it's Night at the Roxbury. 
Can you imagine yeah. showing that to somebody? You're like, why is this funny? Yeah. Just guys just bother. He's just like, I don't know. You had to yeah. kind of. We've seen so many different sketches, and this one now is just so stupid that we're. I it still rings have true. the song. I'll take it back. Sorry, Billy. I still have the song on my iTunes. What the? What is love? No, 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 no. Baby, don't I, hurt I, me. The Billy Crystal one. You look marvelous. He did a song off of that. Okay, well, uh, n- never mind. I, I take back my <laughs> taking back of it because that's that's way too. You know, much. I rubber stamp that. That's just an automatic <laughs> right through. But forget Paris is a good movie, and yes. I do enjoy the basketball scenes. The first time I saw it, I, I was thinking like, okay, Billy Crystal could have chosen any profession in the world uh, to to have this kind of thing happen yeah. with his character and with Deborah Winger, but he chose basketball because that's what's going to get the guys in the theater. Right. But that's I also what, think that's he's what's going to get the sports yeah, fans into the theater. Sports. I think he's a basketball fan. He's a and huge a basketball, basketball fan. He's got Clippers season yeah, Clippers tickets and has for years. Yeah, yeah. And, and for that reason, I appreciate it. Again, you get a lot of NBA cameos, including yeah. David Robinson. Uh, I think Muggsy, and Muggsy. Muggsy's in there. Muggsy's in and there. And Kareem. He throws Kareem out of his, mm-hmm. uh, out of his farewell <laughs> game. His farewell I love that because I would have loved to have had Billy Crystal ref Kobe Bryant's last game oh. and been like, okay, that's illegal shot jacking. Just get out of here. Yeah. Okay? Illegal, 53 shots, you're illegal out. Illegal shot jacking? That's the foul? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Technical hey, legal, Kobe, legal shot jacking. Kobe, congratulations. You took 110 shots. You're going to score 60. Yeah. Well, I also thought the, the movie's interesting because we've never seen a movie from, like, a ref's point of view. And some of the stuff he was mm-hmm. saying, you could you got a window into what it must be like to be an NBA ref sure. and be yelled at and have fans, like, call you all kinds of terrible names while you're on the court, literally feet away from your face. I and think skin so of your of teeth, I can, I, I can give that a basketball movie. Yeah. And I do like the movie. Yeah, so. it's a good movie. All right, that was my number seven, I think. Yeah, so then my number six? six is Finding Forrester. Which is another... That is a punt. Ooh, good. All right. Fair Nothing enough. from you? It's a punt, um, but you, you gotta, I'll let you do it. Well, we can't talk about we, it yet. We'll, we'll, we'll no, go no, to no. your bottom no, of your list. We're going to talk about it, whoever's got it higher on their list. No, I know. I'm saying I'm going to let you do the, do the impression. You, you're the man now, dog. That's a good. That, or punch the keys. <laughs> uh, what do you got at 10? At number 10, I was going to shoehorn in Fast Break. Damn it. But I put in a movie that I do love for the NBA oh, cameo. Oh, shit. And because... Is this uh, fucking singles or something? Is this Kazam? Yeah. Whoopi Goldberg becomes the coach of the Knicks. Oh. Eddie. Oh, are you fucking serious? You're a terrible person. Are you serious? You realize this is a legitimate show. This isn't some (laughs) horse shit. We actually release this for people to listen to. They take our opinions like valid and seriously, hold us up. People buy movies. Talking about it. Gary Payton cameoing is a playground legend who went to Michigan, went to a Final Four. <laughs> yeah, Which I like never it. Never did. No, uh, sir. Underdog story that involves uh, Whoopi Goldberg's Plucking fandom of the Knicks. Fan out of the fucking stands to coach the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, that's Great that premise. was the the tag like the log line to sell this movie, and they went love it. Uh huh. Green well, light. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> it's incredible in the nineties. It's not impossible from James Dolan now as the owner of the Knicks. I would not put it past him to I'm take saying. somebody My out of the My movies hold up 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, All so right, Brody Jr. <laughs> I have Eddie. <laughs> I have Eddie. I, I, think, um, I think that one's going to be out pretty fast, yeah. and I'm fine with that. Um, What's your number nine? At number nine is going to be a controversial choice simply because I don't believe it was ever theatrically released. That's Ooh. because it's an original HBO movie. Starring Don Cheadle as the goat. The oh, movie is called Rebound. It's a good movie. Oh, Rebound. Oh, movie. Earl yeah. Manigault's story. Yeah, it's it the guy, is really good. It's the guy Kareem always said was the best player he ever mm-hmm. saw. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and yeah. he's just this playground legend known as the That's goat. A good and film. drugs derailed his yeah. his shot at the uh, at at being a professional basketball player. But you know, Cheadle's great, and yeah. it came out in the mid to late nineties, I think. Mm-hmm. And it really details how great he was of a basketball player, and then also his demons that he that he wrestled with. And there's a great scene that has become lore and mythology. Is uh, uh, you know, somebody's asking him, like, because, you know, you're trying to get measurements on people. You're trying oh, to yeah. figure out how high can you jump? Can you do, can you do this? Yeah. And he's like, just put a $20 bill up there. He's like, on the rim? He's like, no, on the top of the yeah. backboard. Yeah. And he snatches a $20 bill off the top of the backboard. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I remember I think, that. I, I want to say the saying about him was, you could put a 20 on the top, but he could jump up and make change or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Just like, boom, and you're like, wow, that's yeah. that is gorgeous. Who was this guy? Right. Drugs, yeah. man. It was before all the behind the musics. We've been educated yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. generations now. Just like, you can't do that much drugs. 
drugs, guys. Yeah. That's it's just been incredible, fun. right? Because, I mean, back then in the 90s and, the, and, and – Cocaine almost killed the yeah, NBA. Yeah, dude. In the 70s into the 80s into the 90s. Because the 70s, 80s, it kind of died down a little bit. Then 90s, it started coming back. On the side, people were doing that shit, and it was causing problems. It was around in the 80s. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, it was well, around actually, in the 80s. Well, yeah, Magic talks about that. Yeah, definitely. But, no, this is a good – and back when HBO did good sports movies, right? Because they had a, a more than just a game, the baseball ones about Jackie Robinson and Satchel Page. That was a yeah. really good one with McKelty. Well, Williams. I mean, they went that when it was a game. When it was a game, right? When it was a yeah. game, yeah. Right. 62, the... 62 was great. Oh, my God. That's Speaking a Billy, of Billy Crystal. Crystal. 61. Yeah. 61. 61, that's Sorry, right. 61. 62 is what broke it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's Mark fantastic. McGuire all juiced up. Mm, yeah. yeah. None of that happened. Asterisk. Um, Asterisk. Oh, I still love that season. I count it. It okay. happened. All right. Oh, man, it was a magical season. It was. Magical mm. season in baseball. I was, yeah, I still I watched 100 Cubs games that I'll keep it magical for Ripken. I won't keep it magical for those. I teams. will for him and for Sosa and for all those guys. And then it comes out. Mm-hmm. The steroids doesn't taint it. It just you've, you learn how to look at it in the context of the time it, it you know they played. Yeah, I, I I think it's it's not like there's dirty guys that are hitting off a bunch of clean guys. It's yeah. it's, it's dirty guys hitting off a bunch of guys who hit it better. You okay. know, and it's also I don't say, want to say everybody used because they didn't. They but didn't. there's there's so many people. A Rod never used. What I'm saying is that it's impossible. <laughs> no, no, A Rod. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, Jeter never used. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry. It's, it, 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 I'm just saying it's impossible to know. Right. So I, it's hard for me to put an asterisk. But they also said uh, afterwards when that ban went across the board, mm-hmm. they said the uh, all the writers said the word around this. Yeah, hitting numbers will go down, but watch fastballs. They're going to go down on average three yeah. miles per hour. Yep. Like, watch yep. this. Curveballs are going to go yep. down by mm. X. Like, the break on is not going to be as much because he can't put as much torque on it mm. anymore. Like, it goes and both ways. I haven't heard from Brady Anderson since. Uh-uh. <laughs> He's a big Orioles fan. Man, what a season he's had. What a season he had. One season. Uh, I, I remember that. At number uh, eight on my list is a movie that I think is going to make y'all's list somewhere is Love okay. and Basketball. Uh, yes, that's a punt. Sanal Ethan, uh, Omar Epps, yep, Gabriel Epps. Union popping in there. Really good movie. Man. And, uh, yeah, I think it's a good movie because it's fun to, it very well, rarely, we can't talk we're about punting. it. Yeah, we're punting. Uh, we'll yeah, talk we're about punting. it when we get to his. <laughs> Otherwise, you Big say a bunch of, of positive show. stuff. Big fan of yeah, the show, Yeah, and then guys. we get to him doing it, and it's just like, yeah, everything else said earlier. Now then you right. two can well, share uh, the love, and I'll sit well, back I and have, listen. I might have broken the rules a couple times before, but we'll... We'll just we'll just retape this. This has been a good dress rehearsal. At number six, I have space. Uh, Wait, I'm sorry. Seven. Yeah, I sorry. I do have Space Jam at number seven. six. I thought I had it at seven. Okay, but I actually have it at no, no. You're right. I do have it at number seven. Wait, so what do you got at six? Uh, okay. Hoosiers. What? Fuck off! Wow. Punt. Okay. Well, th- it's been great. Thanks for having me. <sighs> I don't even know how to process that. I apologize for my very violent reaction. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, I, I was think... saying I went inward on the other. Right? I became <laughs> introspective. Yeah, you got really like quiet and peaceful. <laughs> just the idea that it, there are five movies better than it. Five. Yeah. Basketball. Five. Movie. Not I, just movies. I, basketball I would, movies. You could tell me I'm potentially one to two, depending on what you want. Sure. sure. Five. I just find some uh, some holes in that movie. I don't find Eddie. Uh, four, only five slots higher than Hoosiers, <laughs> or lower than Hoosiers. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. All right, uh, well, that. Matt. <laughs> Had they plucked Gene Hackman out of the stands to coach those teams, now we're talking. That could be a number one. <laughs> Four passes. Don't spin the truth that I put Eddie as a better basketball movie than Hoosiers. We're not. You're saying it's very close yeah. in your rankings. It's only five slots away. So it might have jumped to number one had it taken a certain plot device from a movie that is derided by society. I'll just do a, uh, I'll do a quick uh, level of foreshadowing here. Maybe when I made my list and put Hoosiers number six, maybe it was a full moon that night. There it is. Oh, I got it. All right. I had number, so that was your six. <laughs> Nose does not make eye contact five. with it's me five. since he hurts. It's five. You're just... messing up the show. <laughs> just... right, what's your number five? You think five? you know somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> we have a lot of commonality. We, we, we share a very similar backstory. We both are Jimmy Chitwood when we play basketball. On someone, in my head, I yeah, would always head, love yeah. to be. Yeah, and no. not, not even fucking close. Who wouldn't be? If both our dads are doctor, we're doctors. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Average whites yeah. used to be fat. I'm a former <laughs> alcoholic, but we drank together like assholes. You do have a Jimmy Chitwood game because you wow. a, a lot of times playing with Nose, like when we played in the league and stuff. Nose, yeah. Nose had a good shot fake from three, and then he'd drive in to do the mid range two, and and he had a nice little uh, uh, is, yeah. assassin's like two pointer, yeah. which Jimmy Chitwood had. No, I've seen him play. Yeah, when that Matt's shot. on, he's fun. Yeah, when I'm on, when he's not on, I think you're talking about Jimmy Chitwood. Oh, it's a lot of missed drives. It's a lot of missed layups when he's not on, but. 
when he's on, it's fun to watch. That's every play. guy because every guy playing like in their in their thirties can get to the rack occasionally against yeah. other guys in their thirties. Yeah, I just don't. We have just speed. forget how to finish. When we well, get that, there. I don't have the speed now to get around yeah. the arm that I used to, so yeah. I've got to make up for that, and I just I, I don't play enough. Yeah, I watch you adjusting. That's the thing that's to watch Matt's game. Uh, like when he adjusts, adjusts near the rim, you can tell that's where that comes from. It's he's, trying. Used Getting, he's used to getting the rim quicker, that half a step and, well, quicker. And being able so to adjust easier. to yeah. anything that comes my way for the most part. I used to be excellent at that. Now I'm just I'm slow. Just You're saying, as soon as slow. we uh, ban steroids at the park, no game is going downhill. <laughs> But two and two together. Uh, it's more so I started worrying about injury, and my game has gone down. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, try it. I'll give the, you my knee. The Rafael Palmero of, <laughs> of, of Hollywood and Highland. Just wait till he bleaches his skin like Sosa. All right, what's your number? What's no your... need, baby. Look at this fucking complexion. <laughs> Porcelain. Yeah, he already Porcelain. did it. <laughs> uh, and number five, then, for me, is Finding Forrester. Okay, so that was – is it Small higher punt. on your list or no? Uh, do I give you my answer? If it's I, higher than five, five, yes. Five, do I say a football five, four, term? Five, four, and three. It's not on my list. Oh, my God. Finding right. force is not on your list? No. All right. I am not the man now, dog. Yeah, you are not. <laughs> no. You are the uh, F. Murray Abraham of this fucking podcast. Oh, he, yeah, there you he's go. He's the villain in that The uh, literature teacher that yeah. doesn't believe mm-hmm. that he could write this type of assignment. Yeah. Get out of my class. Get out. All because of what, a couple sentences at the, t- the yep. start of a huge paper that he turns your in. Your agent yeah. calls you, hey, you know how you're really good at being a flaming racist? <laughs> Let me give you another. Let me give you another role for that. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Finding Forster. I. You know what? It's where's Rob it's, Brown? It's a different picture of. I don't know. He did that plus Coach Carter, and yeah. I don't know. I can't think of anything else he was in. He did one. Didn't he do that for a film with uh, Julia Stiles? Save the Last Dance. Wasn't that him too? I, you're asking the wrong guy. Okay, I thought he was Rob Brown. Yeah, could be. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I've never seen yep. that that movie. Yep. Um, and this one is just a different perspective of instead of focusing on like a, on a team, which more yeah. often than not happens in a basketball movie, it's just one guy as he's trying to get out of the shithole that he lives in and mm-hmm. go to a better school. Hopefully that sets him up to go to college and whatnot. But he's an intelligent individual, and that gets called into question by his literature teacher, just assumes that he's a dumb jock, yeah. and he plagiarized this from somewhere, and then he manages to find that first two sentences because mm-hmm. Connery teaches him sometimes you just need to write to write. Mm-hmm. Use this to get you started and take the story wherever you want to, and eventually has to come in and defend him uh, on those counts. But he's a reclusive. Yeah, he's uh, a J.D. Salinger type. Yeah, yeah. Salinger. Yeah. You know, he wrote his Fahrenheit. Yeah. And you know, disappeared from uh, public thereafter. Yeah. Uh, you know, a Salman Rushdie type of. Or James Earl Jones in uh, yeah, Field, true, of Dreams, in Field of Dreams. Where he rides out. Yeah. Man, I, I like that aspect of it. Plus, the basketball scenes are, are really good. They are really good. For That's a high big school. question in in a lot of these movies, mm-hmm. especially as we get to like the top five is do the basketball scenes hold up yeah. at least well enough because there's movies that are good but you just, you're like and I'm not saying that my list is going to be the best basketball scenes you've ever seen I'm but on. there's on it list. it does really really help yeah you know i agree that, that you believe the basketball action happening the authenticity of it all yeah, yeah. and you see that and but what's great about this movie also Matt and and uh, Mark is i like the fact that it takes the trope of the Poor kid from the poor neighborhood needing basketball to get into the mm-hmm. nicer schools to get education. It turns it around that the kid was already an intelligent kid. Basketball is not the reason he's there. He's already intelligent. Basketball is like the smaller part of who he is as a person. Yeah. And that's what you find – you discover about him, which is really interesting because I appreciate more the interactions he has with Connery than anything he's doing on the court, even though he's like oh, a yeah. star – and then when things fall apart, that's him kind of rejecting this idea of being this fake god and understanding that there's more to life than just being able to put a ball through a cylinder, as Barbara Hershey might say. There's more to it. And so that's what I enjoyed about him in the film. It's his story, rather, in the film. And and Busta Rhymes does a decent job. He does. I, I was brother. really surprised. Busta Rhymes is great in it. Yeah. What is he? He runs like a scal- like scalping or something like that down at the uh... – Yeah, down at the, at the uh, uh, stadium. The- yeah. Well, no, I don't is think it's garden. Got, or he, no, he uh, runs the parking. He's in oh, charge the parking, of the parking stuff, right? right. He's the parking because he gets him into this. He gets Sean Connery into the stadium, stand on the mound at the Yankee Stadium, which is great. Um, it's yeah, great, the, the scenes of the two of them together in his apartment and Connery's apartment. Yeah, that's where that movie. I could watch that all mm-hmm. day long. Mm-hmm. Rob Brown also. Uh, he was in uh, the show, uh, the HBO show Tream. He was in oh, Shooter, Tremaine. which I'm not sure if Shooter's still on. He's in, and he's in Blind Spot, and he had a small role in The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, what was he in Dark Knight Rises? Wait, he played Alan. I've Alan. That's the that's the Come uh, on guys. We all have our Alan t shirt. That's the Batman movie I do not watch. <laughs> no, fair. Fair. Yeah, that one's that one's tough. All right, did, which is number did four? Did not care for it. Uh my number four is He Got Game. That's my number four. 
Uh, that is my. Do I tell you what Three, number four, it is? Three, four, five. It's my number five. Okay, okay. perfect. Yeah, yeah. we talk about it. Just because it's better than Hoosiers. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. It's a different side. Yeah. Of the, this. Oh, ongoing yeah. kind of discussion. Once again, this idea of p- coming from a poor neighborhood and yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. But also having like agents are coming yeah. around your way. And, this is you a know, 90s movie, man. Sca- people just assuming this guy has a chance to go pro. There are very few of those. This right. could be my ticket. And you can see women glomming on and mm-hmm. friends out of nowhere and all that stuff. And him trying to figure out who he can and cannot trust. Uh, it's, I liked it from that. It was just a different mm-hmm. perspective on a story that you kind of already know. Are we ready to say that Ray Allen might be the best Athlete actor? A- athlete actor, at least on in a basketball movie. Do you mean just purely based on what they do on screen, not off screen? Yeah, yeah, that's what I think he's saying, yeah. as an actor. Yeah. Because OJ's pretty funny in those Naked Gun movies. OJ's great in those Naked Gun movies. He hasn't killed two people. I, well, that's what I'm just saying. We'll Are we talking to, about... If we keep it to basketball, though. Okay. I think he might be the best basketball... But Ray, I mean, uh, OJ just floated in and out of scenes, right. whereas right. Ray had to carry yes, emotional stuff. As yeah. his first movie. Yeah, as yeah. his first movie. That's and a, a lot of times you see movies where like you, there's like some kid and he's like a Wonder Kind prodigy, but... You hear that he has a troubled home life or, yeah. like, his dad's gone. But you never really explore that. And that's what this uh, a lot of this movie is. And it's also just about exploring, like, what we talked about before we got into movies, which is, you know, making the jump either from high school into college life or to the NBA. It's like yeah. it's a huge transition in a, in a kid's life where you would need your father figure arguably the most. Right. How yeah, do good you handle counsel. stuff? Well, and this was the time when we were hearing these stories now more about these kids with their fathers who were in prison or broken homes, those kinds of things, like really needing basketball in which to go. I don't remember that being the story around Magic or Larry or any of the guys in the 80s. Like, I didn't really hear a lot about that. But in the 90s, it started to become these human interest stories that they were, because ESPN sports networks started to become yeah, like I, they would produce those kinds of stories. There were more media outlets and stuff. It, exactly. More and the, Roy for Firestone. Stories. Right. Yeah. Roy Firestone. Right. Exactly. And the agents, right? The agents were starting to come at younger ages. Yeah. They were coming at you in college. Well, bigger dollars. Bigger, exactly, and so they were caught, and there was um, caught these guys getting caught in these scandals, including some of the Fab Five, with this idea of these people coming in some and of, putting money. <laughs> some of, yes, yeah, some of these scandals, and yeah. agents being celebrities themselves, right? You know, True. Like knowing the knowing the names of agents and just realizing yeah. how big of a factor that was in in basketball, and also how illegal it was, depending on where you were in your basketball, right? Well, like life. Uh, with Patino getting taken down yeah, with recently. the Adidas and like, hey, mm-hmm. I, I love the the money. And then also hitting up, hey, I, I need those Yeezys. Yeah. Send me the new Yeezys when they come out and stuff like that. And just, wow, they have to like bribe this guy a still, lot. Like a still. Lot. Yes. Yeah. You're already getting so much from us. Now we got to send you. Fine. What size? <laughs> I heard I heard Patino defend himself on, uh, on Dan Patrick. He called oh. in and talked. I, I believed a lot of what Rick Patino was selling. Me. What? That's because he's a good salesman. He's a good salesman. But I was driving around listening. I'm being like, they they shafted this poor guy. Like, yeah, he's a good salesman. That's the reason he got to the job that he's got. He, yeah. He's he made a really good. Defense. Just think how good a salesman Calipari is. Yeah, I was just gonna say that dude's got to be one of the best. He is of a, all time. Uh, that guy is as corrupt as they come. Give me a break. Oh, with he Calipari. just he exudes snake oil salesman. Oh yeah, just exudes it. And guess what? He gets good players so far. Kentucky hasn't yeah. invalidated any of their yeah, wins so far. Yeah. But it's happened every other, you know, yeah. a program that he's been at. But, yeah, yeah that, I, I'm surprised the numbers don't come out more often. Calipari like called me before this podcast and said, uh, don't put Hoosiers in your top five. And I was like, <laughs> all right, coach. I give you 5,000 to put Hoosiers in your top five. <laughs> give you a brand I, new pair of Jordans. <laughs> I played uh, football for one year with Patino's son. Oh. oh I was yeah. right guard and he was right tackle. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and uh, Never met the man. I, don't, I He maybe came to one game. Yeah. Wow. Wow. At the same time as like they're building up to start their season, he's right. got practice, all that stuff. Right. Who knows? Yeah, was he? Is, he was at Kentucky. Patino was at Kentucky. At then? Kentucky, yeah. mm. I lived in Lexington for uh, two and a half years. Okay. Interesting. Happened to be coinciding with that. Mm-hmm. It's Forrest Gump over here. There's been a lot of interactions he's had with famous people through his travels. You've you got any a, others? Or are you just been, throwing that out? No, as one? I don't have any. I don't. I don't, don't have these kind of Forrest stories. Gump. I don't have this kind of story. What kind of story is that? I played wait, football for one year wait, with his son. But you've been in West Virginia I'm amongst the Italians. A, like you've had a lot of travel. Working on man. a combo impression yeah. now, and and here it is. Ha <laughs> ah, Life is like a box of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> You're better than that. Come on. You're better, You're better than, than that. that. Yeah, you, you should have taken a more obscure line from that movie. <laughs> Mama always said. <laughs> Jenny, oh, Jenny. <laughs> I must have had twelve is, is, is he? Is he? Is he smart? <laughs> that's my boat. That's my yeah. boat. That, that's that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's special. Uh, listen, the um, and also these. This is the greatest name in any basketball movie. Jesus G- Shuttlesworth. That's the greatest name ever. Like uh, in any basketball movie. I love when he. Got I mean, pissed. Chitwood is a good name, but Jesus Shuttlesworth. Jesus is Shuttlesworth. Shuttlesworth, and just uh, like him complaining to uh, Denzel, like, don't you think it was nuts? My mom coming out, Jesus, Jesus, yelling for me to come back in. And you think of like everything I've been taught about New York growing up yeah. in those and everybody rings out amongst the neighborhood and they all know that she's yelling for you and you alone because this isn't a Mexican neighborhood. <laughs> oh, Puerto Rican. Jesus otherwise. Yeah. Uh, a Puerto Rican. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're the only black kid around here. <laughs> and his name Jesus is just bad. From Ray Allen, I, I, I'd be hard-pressed to come up with another athlete that's carried that much. And I'm happy to say that I can now watch that movie without any sort of like lingering pain because the Spurs came back the next year oh my and beat Miami Heat because I could not think about that movie. That whole off season when Ray Allen hit that shot, I just I, oh, that's right. I couldn't, could not do it. That's one of the greatest Lucky, shots ever. A good tip out from Chris Bosh, and it was a, a play, a play. Well, yeah, but I mean, it was yeah, I guess it was a rebound and he threw it to, to but it Ray. went like right to him. Yes, another defender right did. over. He passes it over. Yeah. Ray Allen. You is, don't have to relive it. Practice that yeah. shot a thousand times a day. It just perfectly turns around, boom, and you're like, that's you're what he does. You're going to see Denzel like, way up in the rafters, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Out of prison early, <laughs> yeah. point I thought, down. I thought that Derek Fisher shot would hurt you more than the Nah, Derek Ray Fisher Allen. shot. That shot was it. a miracle and a half. It, I mean, it annoys the hell out it of was. me, yeah. but I'm, it's not it, – I'm fine. That raise you losing the championship. That's what that shot was. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. I was, uh, that was tough. That was beautiful. That's like Mark Allen, Marcus Allen's turnaround. That was when you knew it was over. Um, <laughs> oh, both uh, of so us. that was my well, well, four? Yeah. Four. Well, mm-hmm. Denzel's great in this and, and just one last thing about this movie. I was reading recently a thing with Spike Lee in an interview, and he talked about uh, – talked about and Denzel, dude, like um, they apparently played each other for – Denzel was, was uh, pissed that he was going to have to lose by – so he played Ray for real because Denzel used to play at Juco. So he used to play uh, – so he wanted Yeah, he to play. can hoop. He can hoop. Yeah. He wanted to play Ray for real. Mm-hmm. And apparently he got three or four points off him. Yeah. And then Ray like steamrolled him. Of course. Yeah, and yeah. it was like, oh, shit. So it was a whole – that, yeah, that that's, lingering tension was real throughout legit. the movie. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is legit. I can see that. Uh, all right. What's your number three? Uh, my number three is Hoop Dreams. That's my number three as well. I will uh, – I don't know what you do. Punt. It, is it two or one? Is it, it above three, four, five? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's a punt. That's a punt. Fine. So then my number five uh, is Love and Basketball, which uh, we talked about you, earlier. So let's talk higher? about it now. Oh, that's right. That was yours mm-hmm. from lower. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about it. What a good film. Surprisingly good film. And I remember when this came out, because it was kind of like an independent film. And this was back around the 90s, too, when independent films were becoming bigger and bigger. But this idea that a basketball film that was not your typical type of basketball film and film critics, white film critics, were saying this is more than just a basketball film uh, or a black basketball. There was more going on here. And it's a new take to approach this kind of story. And then you go and you watch it. Yeah, this is actually very – uh, intelligent approach to a sports movie. And I do love that so much of their relationship plays out on a basketball court. Maybe yes. not necessarily playing basketball, but just a ball is around and a court is yeah. around. And it's such a great metaphor for dating where, yeah. because, because, you know, we always use sports metaphors for anything else in life. And right. if dating's a big part of that, then you're going to make those kind of comparisons and to, to see how their various uh, love of basketball plays out individually yeah. and then how it unites them. It's just, it's a, it's a movie that's, I think it's, I, it would. It's something that we consider if we were talking about like the best recent romantic movies, as yeah. well as just a basketball movie. Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen this since came out, so I don't really. Oh, really? Remember it? I remember seeing it, going yeah, eh, and then never thought about it since. Yeah. This was this was back when Omar Epps was trying to be like the next Wesley Snipes. He had and a would, shot. Yeah, he did. He had a shot. I mean, he, he played the major league in major league the mm-hmm. sequel. He played the Wesley yeah. Snipes. Well, part, was it uh, the program? Wasn't he one? Oh, of Oh yeah, the program. Or was it Higher Learning as well? Was Higher Learning, that? yeah. Oh my God, that movie does not. He wasn't yeah. programmed to. Yeah. He wasn't the pro. I think was that the movie he had the tutor and he kind of falls mm-hmm. for the tutor and okay. Yeah. Yeah. That movie, uh, the higher learning does not hold. I watched half an hour of that. The I haven't seen that. So does long. not hold up. Huh? Does not. Man, I haven't Omar seen it in a minute. Is overacting the fuck out of huh. it. I got to imagine like Michael Rappaport probably is too. Oh, my Rappaport is as well. Yeah, yeah. I, when, it's all a bunch of them. They're like young, early in their career. Yeah. When Tyra gets shot and she's like, Omar. I mean, the overacting is mind blowing, and but uh, Rappaport is doing his thing. But Rappaport was always like on the f- like on the fringe emotion. So it's not that he's overacting; it's just Rappaport. Yeah, well, he is just, basically he only goes to eleven at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He doesn't, you know, never dials it down or whatnot. He just yeah. knows like people like it. It seems like, and I'm just yeah. me just guessing on the outside, but it seems like. He'd been giving a lot of bigger performances, so that's what he assumed yeah. he was cast for, to give a big performance. It's like yeah. be a big, loud New Yorker. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, well, in, in, in this movie, like, they, they're, they're looking at, like, moving on, college, making money, all this. Like, just so much about this that was intelligent. And then, you, like, their success, like, uh, with the com- competition between them also, um, how does that work in the relationship? There's so much to explore here that you don't normally see in basketball movies. So if you haven't seen Love and Basketball, I would definitely recommend it. And Sonal Lathan, who's still working. What a fantastic uh-huh. – she's beautiful yeah. in this movie, like just yeah. and really great. Uh, all right. That was your number what? That was my number eight. That was my number five. Yeah, so then my five, number four, four, he got gay. Number three, Hoop Dream. So on, on to you. you. What's your on four and five? five? My four. number five, a movie that I do consider better than Hoosiers, is He Got Game. Okay. We already did, yeah. Uh, number four is Teen Wolf. <laughs> so we what talked about it early. A, uh, all right. What a influential movie on my on a young Mark Ellis. It made me love the Beach Boys even more. I played Surfing uh. USA constantly. I, I I love so much about that movie, and I do enjoy the basketball scenes because it the the end of the movie is yeah. so like it's so great to see him come in as not just not a werewolf, but as tiny little Michael J. Fox yeah. that's going to try to beat this big bully Mick in the red team, you know, for the Beavers and. Watching some of the antics of the Beavers on the court, like Chubby eating during a game, yeah. when, when the Wolf steals from his own player because he wants to score faster, it's just, it's, I, I love that movie. Such yeah. a soft spot. And the relation between him and Boof, how Boof wants to date Scott, not the Wolf. Right. Very interesting. Who's Does, the girl in this movie? Do you remember? No. Uh, Boof is the, is the is friend, and then Pamela Wells is the, uh, the, the blonde bombshell who uh, only likes him when he turns into Yeah, the yeah, right. for his... You know, burgeoning plot. Who are the actresses? Yeah. Do you remember the actresses were? Uh, no, I can pull that. It's up not Gertz quick. or anything. Uh, so does no, no, no. It's it, no nobody too. Uh, nobody oh, too okay. famous. Does Court know that him getting beat down is one of your favorite cinematic <laughs> moments? <laughs> it is in great all to see of our friend comedian Court McCown. Court McCown. It is weird. Oh, once he's in the film, yeah, he's one of the oh. on the bad team, and then uh, he was how funny. What was the other movie he was in? Was it Can't Buy Me Love? And he, he was, the he was bad in guy? Can't Buy Me Love. Yeah, he was Can't the, Buy he was Me the bull, yeah. He's the villain in Can't Buy Me Love. Yeah. What? Yeah. The, I like Can't Buy Me yeah. Love. That's one of my claws. That's oh, a, Patrick, what's his face? Court's Dempsey, a really nice right? guy. Yeah. It's just, you play Court's a lot of great, villains. Yeah. <laughs> Susan Earth City is, yeah. uh, plays Booth. No clue who yeah. that is. But she's really good in that role. And then uh, James Hanton, obviously, uh, plays you know right. Harold, the, uh, the father. And um, yeah, uh, oh, that's funny. Mark Arnold plays Mick. Who is the and, and who's it, the fat guy? Uh, Chubby uh, Mark uh, Holton is the guy's name, and oh, okay. he was also in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yes, yeah, he had, a, he had a run, nice run yeah. there for a while. But the coach, Coach Finstock, in that movie is so <laughs> coach funny. Finstock. Do not sleep on the Coach Finstock scenes in Teen Wolf; they are hysterical. Wow, that coach! I don't know what it, Jay Tars is. I don't know what he's done since then, but he is so funny in that role. Yeah. So strange though. I just for some reason I don't consider it. It is a basketball movie, but it's more than that. So it doesn't. Who's your friend that is the bad guy? Or the... Court McCown. C O R T. Is he in? I don't Mc- see him on the list. Yeah, he's on the other team. No, no, okay. no. He's on the Beavers. Okay, I, don't... I, I thought he was on the villain no, team. Court McCown is on the Beavers. Oh, is he really? Yeah, he's one of the starting five. Oh, here he is. Okay. Oh, he's a good. Okay, yeah. I can see why he's an intimidating looking dude. Yeah, with the tattoos and everything. Well, good looking guy though. All right, so uh, that was your number what four? That or was five? my number four. Okay, what's your number three? And then my number three is Blue Chips. Oh, Jesus. Number three, interesting. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I okay, I, I saw yeah, I think I saw it twice in the theater. <laughs> I saw that movie like, literally a couple of days ago, and I, I can't not watch it when it's on. I love watching Shaq and and Penny. Penny, on oh yeah, with what could have been? But that movie. Holds up so well what? in the modern era of well, college yeah. basketball and okay. scandal and when it all costs and we're going to do all this under the table okay. and boosters. The dirtiness of college basketball, it's it, it can look like it's being cleaned up. Maybe it actually does get cleaned up at some point, but right. it just – that movie is such a great – accurate representation when it came out i don't know how accurate it was i think it might be even more accurate I, now it, it could be yeah. It is yeah. back then and and nolte is great yeah, is. as this bobby knight over you know overreaching trying to hang on to the past glory how your coaching tactics in the 70s and 80s are not going to fly with the new modern player it's still i was amazed at how well it holds up yeah uh i can't agree with you it just does nothing for me it feels like a tv movie and so that's why I don't 100% roll. Like TV movie back then. I don't mean TV movie now. But it, 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 it for whatever, and the, the 
like the Shaq scene, like I don't, I don't know. For me, they just they all can't act, so it drives me insane. I appreciate it for the fact that it tried but to show Nolte's the underbelly great. of yeah. something we're all accustomed to seeing, and we maybe some of the populace at that point had read enough articles, and it was kind of an open secret. Yeah. But the average person hadn't thought about it ever because they just don't care about college basketball enough. Mm-hmm. Just like yeah, pay, players get play, uh, paid. I remember watching the theater going, "Who's this fucking white guy holding out for almost as much money as everybody else?" <laughs> I'm like, not even kidding. And this fucking wannabe Larry Bird, like, right. oh, you're not worth what it's it like, was like fifty grand or get something. Get another white kid that can shoot. It was a tractor, and uh, I yeah, think he tractor. asked for twenty grand. I think because uh, he, he just comes into the office like, think about thirty grand, figure a blue chief athlete like myself. <laughs> yeah. And then his dad got a new John Deere tractor, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just, I really, I, I, I think that, that movie. Uh, is a great look at athletics in general. Yeah, what goes on on college campus. I should probably give it more credit than I do because you're right. It does explore that, and then you see how it's not just one way, where it isn't just like these kids coming in and they're innocent and wide eyed and they get yeah. taken advantage of. They know what they're walking Some into, do. and their parents know as well. Mm-hmm. So they want to get what they can out of the situation. And then the coaches sometimes. The old school coaches who were caught up in the more noble parts of the game when they were growing up now have to play this game a certain way, and it really like yeah. ruffles their feathers. And you can see that with Nick mm-hmm. through the whole there's movie. There's a point well, shaving scandal in that yeah. movie that, yeah. that like yeah. had happened, and there's just so That's much right. in that. Yeah. Well, he starts off losing after he's already won championships yeah. and feeling the pressure of, I'm not getting the talent that I used to get. Yeah. I'm not winning as many games. I'm still relevant, but not championship relevant. Right. And the pressure of that uh, you Remember who plays the athletic director? It's uh, what's his name? Is it Cousy? Bob Cousy. Bob yeah, because they shoot free really throws. Good. Yeah, and he just sits there and f- makes like thirty in a row yeah. while the camera's running. It's just a continuous shot with just, his left hand too. Does and then he? and then Nolte jokes, don't you ever miss? And like, I wonder if that was one take. I want that to be one take. Yeah. And by the way, I think it was of, takes William Friedkin, director of The Exorcist. That's right. Directed uh, this movie, Blue Chips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's your number two, man? Uh, my number two is Hoosiers. I figured it was going to be pun- it was neck and neck with another son of a which bitch. is probably going to be your number two. Yeah, that's right. Is anyway, what do you got it to? What do you got it to? White men can't jump. Okay, and that's called a punt. What do you uh, got it to? It's called a punt for me too. I have hoop dreams at two. Okay, so Ooh. now we talk about hoop dreams because okay. we all had it. Yeah, yeah. Right. so far, hoop dreams. Yeah. What numbers are for you? Three as well. Three, okay. three, and two. Okay. Yeah, Good Ho- film. Hoop dreams was the first movie that, that came out, and I remember watching it and. Thinking about basketball one way when the movie started, particularly my ability to play the game, mm. and then by the end being like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to be a pro athlete, <laughs> you know, like seriously. And yeah. I just I remember seeing how hard these kids were working, what they were going through, and and then I remember thinking like, I still haven't heard of them. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. And, they're not even good enough. Yeah, and thinking like, God, they're great players. Like they could kick my ass up and down the court. Mm-hmm. I have no idea who they, how many other people out there mm-hmm. are like this. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was such a great documentary. I heard of the documentary because Roger Ebert was complaining that it didn't get nominated for best documentary that year. Oh, interesting. And I remember hearing a there was this thing called Hoop Dreams, and I'm like, well, that sounds like something I'd be interested in, and just watching it, and just just blown away by the reality that it captured mm-hmm. in yeah. basketball. So yeah, it's like two kids, but they're going down different paths. Right. But they're kind of the same, but different. The, you know, I've always felt for the – seemed like the poor of the two mm-hmm. that just had the more unstructured home life, and he was doing the best he could, and yeah. this was a potential way out. You're like, man, I hope you get it. I hope you grab this brass ring and fucking elevate yourself. Was that Arthur Agee was the, or was it Gates who was – The worser of the two? Yeah. I'd have to look it up. I'll I think Gates. it was – because Arthur, I remember ha- having heard of Arthur Agee somehow, some way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, and and just it, it, there's just so much real life drama in there. Yeah, I remember this was the first film documentary I saw in the theaters, and I remember uh, because I'd seen an EW uh, magazine, like uh, top ten things to watch or something to watch or something like that, and some. I was like, oh, this sounds interesting, and I had no idea it was a three hour documentary. Like I just went in to watch it, and. It, when it was over, and it's such an engrossing – it's almost a film in the storylines, right? Because if you mm-hmm. – this would be a different documentary if you knew the ending. The fact that you don't know the ending and you don't know these guys, 
you essentially can fool yourself as you're sitting in a theater that you're watching a movie, like a legitimately scripted movie, because you don't know how this is all going to turn out. Yeah. And then when it turns out the way it does, you, you're heartbroken to a degree because neither one really gets there. And then you see the blurbs of what they become. You're like, oh, that's great. But still, like it's a hell of a thing to come. And that's the thing that's incredible thing about basketball. It's like it's a hell of a thing to be a god. And then – you got to work at the con- recreation center to pay bills. Hey, well, the best chance you have is being seven foot to make the. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's something like nineteen percent of all seven footers in the U.S. Pl- are in the NBA. Right. Something really? ridiculous like that. Yeah. I'm surprised it's that high. Wow. Well, there's not a lot of seven footers. Yeah. Right, but how many can hit, hit the three point now? That's it. You yeah. can't even get well, more. It could change the dynamic of who actually makes it. But oh yeah, it's, it's something along those lines where because there's only so many seven footers in this country. Right. So so long as you can run back and forth and you know throw a ball up, you're in the NBA. How many uh, how many yeah. five foot ten guys are in the NBA? <laughs> God. Well, none of us. <laughs> mm, I'm trying to struggle to think of anybody right now that is currently five ten <laughs> that is still in the league. No, I, I don't know. If there's any current five teners. Yeah. How big is Dame Lillard? How big is Kemba Walker? Ramon Sessions. Yeah, I think they're at least an honest six foot. You know, it blew my mind. I was at Fig and Olive two years ago, and I come out, uh, and there's Steve Nash. And in my mind, Nash is a mite. I saw him on TV. He's a mite. That motherfucker was taller than me. And I, my mind would just like blew up right in front of me. It was, he's 6'1". And I could, I stand, I'm standing next to him. And I'm just like, because I shook his hand. and, and intru- I couldn't believe it. Yeah. You just get caught up in how big everyone else Kimba's is. Kimba's 6'1". Okay. I, I told you, I had that, that experience with, uh, with Daryl Green. Oh yeah, the Redskins cornerback is he taller? All time great cornerback. He no, I mean he's probably it, like he was taller than me at the time because right. I was a kid. I was in sixth grade when I met him. But seeing how thick he is, oh yeah, shocked me. That's the yeah. He's fair just point. it built like like it's mm-hmm. like a tree trunk. It's a shorter tree trunk, but it is a tree trunk. Right, right. So oh. I I think what the point is is that I don't think that any of us have a future. <laughs> Not even athletics. close. Not even close. <laughs> That's why I schmo down, man. I schmo down. I saw, I saw Dom Sue one time. Oh, it was right before he got drafted because oh. they were doing their bowl game or whatever in San Diego. Yeah. So I saw him down in gas lamp. And he's just this human refrigerator mm-hmm. walking past. He looked giant next to his teammates. Yeah. You're like that dude is huge. I imagine mean, that hitting you when you're expecting it. Then imagine that stomping on you after the exactly been after run. you assume you're safe. Yeah. I'm, I re- I met Reggie McKenzie when I was 20 years old. Ah, yeah. And, and I was like. Jesus Christ in heaven. I, you know, because when, when you're a man growing up and you play pickup football, you play, you think, well, a couple of breaks, I might be in the NFL. Right. Right. You delude right. yourself with that stupidity. And I saw that man and I immediately just, my balls liquefied and slid down my <laughs> legs because I'm like, I can't even imagine getting hit by a guy that going full speed in pads, that guy hitting you onto a hard surface yeah. like the tundra of Green Bay or something. Like, I would just completely shatter into pieces. It just is insane to think about. Yeah. Well, that's why you didn't make it, bro. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Amongst many By the reasons. way, Isaiah Thomas is the only one I could find that's under 5'10". Isaiah, like, uh, oh, right, right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Fair enough. Uh, all right. So that was what? So what do we talk about next? So what? we go, uh, I guess, to ones, right? my number two. Well, which would be your number one right. and your number f- five? Six. 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 For some reason. Hoosiers. Hoosiers. How we're not talking about why man can't jump as number one is beyond as, as number two is beyond me. But all right, uh, should I should I give my my problem with Hoosiers now or do what you, you guys want? Go to right ahead. Time Go to right ahead. Please start us negative so we can end positive. It's just that um, it's a very well acted movie. Yes. Uh, Gene Hackman is great, and his performance alone, I can I can vault him and Dennis Hopper. Stop, and everybody stop in that building movie. the film up. Um, we'll take care of. Yeah, that. yeah. I have a problem <laughs> with following. A bunch of white kids who aren't that good to the championship, and they're playing against a team of superior athletic black kids, and never once mentioning how hard the road for those black kids was socially to get to a championship game in Very Indiana. True. What did those black kids have to go through on a day to day basis that Norman Dale's white kids never dreamed about? Right. And that always, always, always upset me. From the really? first time I saw it, I was like, because uh, you know, I'm watching the movie, and I'm and I'm just thinking, like, I know, I know what I know that the movie's about this. It's a true story. I I know it it's is. a true yeah. story. I know that it's about this, but I can't help but think the more interesting story to me is watching that team and what they had to go through. Hmm. This is a great point you bring up, Mark, and it's an interesting point of discussion because a the black team is a powerhouse team, and they were a powerhouse team. Yeah. So what? 
did they have to go through? Because they were a powerhouse team. They were revered in that state. So did they have the typical were black ex- – Well, that's what I'm wondering. Did they yeah. have the typical black experience we might think that they had gone through in the 50s with racism and what have you and all that was happening with Ku Klux Klan? Was that occurring during that time in that era? So, or were they actually treated better than a lesser talented black team would be treated? I would imagine. So, would they have any, necessarily the same any preferential yeah. treatment they got might have happened on the court? And as soon as they're mm. off the court, they're back to being yeah, judged I because they were in Indiana, very much like any days. state of the union in okay. the fifties. Okay, think about it. That championship game, the people watching it were more than likely if they didn't have a team, were cheering along racial lines. I would assume so. I don't yeah. know because I mean this had been a well, team that had been champions before. Yeah, <sighs> I've lived in Indiana. Yeah, fair. I defer. I'm to not you saying, yeah. but I'm saying like. This is a team that's representative of who I am right. in the 19, what is this, 50s? Yeah, 50, 51. Versus a, like a team that I think is a superior athlete and should beat me, mm-hmm. beat us, but not not these plucky white guys. Right. Yeah, I, I get your fault of it. It's still, but I never thought of it. it's not really the fault of the movie because the movie's like, it's hey. telling the truth. It, yeah, the movie's telling like, the other is, side of the story. This yeah. is the story that we wanted to tell. Right. So I get that. It also, it's just very frustrating to watch uh, basketball without a three-point shot. I want, <laughs> yeah. I want to say the other team had. Or a based, shot clock. It's based on a squad that had like Elgin Baylor or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the other yeah. team did. Yeah. 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 It's just like, wow. I, I never knew that until I heard uh, Spike Lee go, mm-hmm. hey, the other team and Elgin Baylor. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's part of the true story? I didn't know. I'd rather yeah. see that story than watch Buddy shoot Grandma. Well, now, <laughs> give me a better version than Glory Road. That was no. the movie I brought up earlier where it just like it starts and you know exactly where it's going the whole time. Glory right. Road, I almost uh, – I, I probably should have bumped Eddie out of for Glory Road uh, just because of the story that it's telling. Right. It's a great story. so good. But uh, still, I, I get your point. But this film, I, I think I look past it because it works on – it's as an incredible slice of Americana of a time in our country for, for whatever – like these kids are from poor – Poor, just as poor neighborhoods yeah, poor in different trash. ways. Yeah, in sure. different Appalachia. ways. Appalachia. They appreciate church. They worship the church just as other kids would, uh, black kids would from that time in poor near. So there's a lot of similarities in that way, but obviously the difference being the racial overall. Yeah, nobody's racial trying lines. to burn their church down. Exactly, but. exactly. There's a difference. But Gene Hackman is an outsider. He's a city boy who comes into the country. So you do have some of that roaming through this whole thing. And these guys, the way they want to coach him, these, these kind of like these, you, for lack of a better term, maybe rednecks or whatever from that time they they're the ones who think that it's a they want to coach by committee like well we, this is what we did all the time this is what works so in a way i think the film is bold in the way that it takes on this idea of the small town need to have everything be in a certain way here comes this guy who un, who uh, unsettles them because he's a foreigner in a way he's also educated in a different ways from the city so there's there's uh, stereotypes about that starts and, nailing and, yeah. the most available teacher yeah right the hot, yeah right everybody well, will start nailing that that's way. where like if the movie has a fault to me i think that slows the pace of the movie down the Bob Hershey storyline yeah when we, wow. they detour, detour over i think it's it doesn't kill the movie obviously for me it's right. my second favorite but it's like uh, i understand why you need to do this but I think better service to the would, movie would be just gloss right over. Ironically, I would take those scenes because I, I, Gene yeah, I Hackman and Barbara scenes, Hershey yeah. are so good yeah. together. They are. They, I just and think I, it's a different movie. By the chemistry. Um, th- there's a couple times uh, like everybody has had that that I didn't have that father personally, but yeah. I know guys my teams did, um, w- that is going to sit in the stands and just be a drunk, loud mouth. Yeah. And Dennis Hopper plays the character very well. Mm-hmm. When we take a detour to find him like drunk, passed out in the woods yeah. hunting, I-, I can lose that scene before I can lose the Barbara Hershey. What? Uh, Gene See, Hackman no, that, that, that to me shows the reality of what these kids have to yes. deal with at home, yeah. as well as like I'm still trying to maintain and lead a life that I think is normal and everything mm-hmm. else. To deal with this is my home situation, yeah, sure. and, and we never know how that kid puts him, like where he lives or what he does, because his mom, his mom is never in the movie. Hopper's ex-wife yeah. is never in the movie, and so we don't know how that kid survives or lives or where who he stays he's t- with. He's self-sufficient. Yeah, I guess maybe he's self-sufficient in that great way. If Norman Dale was banging his his old lady. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Norman, I just I, I want to re- re- remake this movie as Norman Dale comes to town and just hooks up with every available, <laughs> and that's why the town doesn't like him. It's just big swinging dick Norman Dale right. well, coming a, to Indiana. It's a great underdog story, and I love the story. It is. and, it and is. I love the storylines. I love the Gene Hackman romance with Barbara Hershey because it, once again, it's two entrenched, stubborn people. People having to open the doors again after they've both had their hearts broken in different ways. Her and the relationship that she had previous to Hackman and him, his relationship to basketball because he let it get so uh, – he was so passionate he punched one of his own kids, yeah. which is insane. And then you have the relationship with the dad, with Hopper, like how that plays out. When, when Hopper says, son – 
kick their butts. I cry every single time because of that relationship with his father. So there's a lot for, that connects that's human to me and then the games themselves and the way he's teaching them. Because, you know, we work with a guy, a young kid who sometimes can get a little unruly. We gotta put a, you know, we gotta tell him to stop <laughs> yeah. chewing the gum and we gotta tell him to do four passes before he posts something on social media. It's that kind of thing. And so you see that with the movie, and that's what's enjoyable to me is the progression of everyone. And Buddy comes back. We don't even know how Buddy comes back, but he's back on the team. And apparently there's like deleted scenes and stuff like that. So there's a great story here that I just enjoy. So that's that. Now let's get to the one you guys love the most. Well, what what's your favorite moment from Hoosiers? Like, like what's because the, the one you for know, me is when he gets out the measuring tape. Oh, that's oh, a great yeah, moment. That is just the rim is the same here as it is anywhere else. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that more than the uh, the more like sugar coated. Which if it happened, that's fine. I'm not bashing yeah. the moment. But when you know, let's do this for all the small schools oh, who yeah, never yeah, had a chance yeah, to be here. Like it's a nice thing to say. Mm-hmm. But I think about Norman Dale it being very uh, Greg Popovich in that moment of mm-hmm. just measuring the hoop. He's like, it's the same here, yeah. same as yeah. anywhere else. Let's go play the game. The game is the same. Yeah, uh, I would say the moment when uh, when he. You know, he puts them all together. He says, I love you guys. Like, that's the moment where Hackman, the character of Norman Dale, allows the kids to see vulnerability to him because he's not allowed them to see a vulnerability through the whole movie. And in that moment is when he solidifies his connection with those kids and why they play for him so hard because they sense a dad type of aspect to it. Uh, yeah. All right. So our number one, then I guess, or you guys number one. Yeah, white yeah. man can't jump. Air white Bud. man oh, <laughs> Air cannot Bud. jump. Air Bud. Never seen the Airbuds. Uh, Don't know anything about. Never What's seen the, the Airbuds, one? but uh, yes, the uh, what's the Costner one? Oh no, the um, Costner. You put the air up there. The That's air bacon. There. <laughs> I've seen that. That made my side list, and I was like, "Who are we kidding?" It's terrible. Anyway, the white man can't jump. Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson, Rosie it's just my Perez. Fa- it's my most rewatchable to me oh, now yeah. at this point. One it's- of the most influential films in my life yeah. for a number of different reasons. And that really, everybody's going to have this moment when you're watching sports movies because you love sports and you realize that as you're watching the sport, you're also being taught life lessons. Yeah. I thought that movie just did it so well about so many different aspects of one's Life of how you handle relationships, mm-hmm. how you handle friendships, how you handle on the court versus off the court, honesty, all these, you know, and then you, you break it down along social lines or racial lines. Mm-hmm. Is the, there's no way you can slice that movie that it does not work. I've often described Matt Nost as the Wesley Snipes to my Woody Harrelson when we do the Schmodown. <laughs> because I get, I don't know that I've heard that before. Because have I? I, because I, I can get, like, Woody gets before the tournament when he's nuts and he's jumping around. And Wesley has to calm him down. When we first started doing the Schmodown, Matt was the one that was always having to calm me down because I would get, like, fucking hyped yeah. up. and None of that shots of whiskey. Yeah, I was doing shots first of whiskey just matches. to calm my nerves. And Matt would be like, it's okay. Whatever happens, we're going to kick these guys' asses. <laughs> yeah. And you know I'd be so you don't. worried. You know yeah. what you don't. Yeah, and I'd be so worried. Mm-hmm. So the, the, I, I, uh, that's why I always thought that the movie in some strange way. Could, but, but I tell you, the movie is incredible for me because it's gotten better for me as I've gotten older. Yeah, and that's surprising to me because I, I liked it. I just didn't think it was like everyone gave it all this love, and I'm like, I, it's a good movie. I didn't think it was deserved all this love. But then as you get older, you're like, oh fuck, there's a lot in here that still resonates as you get older, and that's the mark of a really great film. Well, you see a character in, in Harrelson, you have a path where you can stop making these mistakes. Yeah, and he can't deny who he is yeah. and what he wants as and much as he should. It's it's an unfortunate thing we all do in life. Sometimes mm-hmm. we sabotage ourselves. Before anybody else has the opportunity. Yeah. And to do that over and over and over consistently again. Sometimes it works out for him. Sometimes right. it doesn't. It right. just feel for it. And yeah, it feels so much more heartfelt. And all the little, like, side characters in the movie, they show up to different courts around here in L.A. Yeah, yeah. You go down and you play in this area and be like, Psh. I'm going to get my gun and fucking kill every one of you last motherfuckers. I love that shit. As soon as he starts walking away, all they all just, just you know, scatter like rats. i got to get the fuck out of here just over and over. Like, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Dwayne Wade? Yeah. Dwayne Wayne, rather? Dwayne Wayne. Great performance out of him. Uh-huh. Yeah, Kadeem we Hardison. Kadeem Hardison. Kadeem Hardison. We go and Who had auditioned to play the Wesley Snipes. He was in oh. line to play the Wesley Snipes That's character until they got Wesley. Oh, really? Yeah, he was the choice until they got Wesley. See, I heard that like like in the making of the movie, like like Woody Harrelson could play and Wesley oh, could yeah. really start to play yeah, from scratch. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. You can tell when you watch it. Yeah. Um, you know what I love play? about it is, so before Kubrick died... This was one of his apparently one of his favorite movies. Shut up! I'm not kidding. I I, wow. I want to say he contacted the director to let him know. Directed I'm by not... Ron Shelton, who Ron did Shelton. a number of all time you know great sports movies. Yeah. What else did he do? Uh, he did uh, Tin Cup and he did Bull Durham. Bull Durham. 
Yeah. Guy and, knows how to do sports movies. Yeah, and uh, with, with White Man Can't Jump, like that movie, watch that movie gave me the confidence to be me on a basketball court, regardless of where, what mm. part of town I was playing in. Because mm. I go all over, and you know, you hear Williamsburg, Virginia, everybody thinks like the colonial parts. There's the colonial part, there's really nice parts, there's really run down parts, just, and they have courts everywhere. I just figure everybody yeah. in like the same garb that Ben Franklin We're would have worn, just running up and down, playing five up. on five, buckles on the fucking shorts for yeah. no reason. Yeah, if you lose, sure. you, have to, you have to be in the stocks for 10 minutes. You got to churn butter. <laughs> In the penalty box for some reason. Those are the frills of the of the blouses. Uh-huh. That they have to- <laughs> oh, it was. Uh, Is there running past? Brutal, brutal. The games oh, that you would see in Colonial Jesus. Williamsburg. You lose, you get a scarlet letter. It's Jesus. not pretty. <laughs> Doing a layup in a Colonial garb would <laughs> yeah, be everything. Yeah. Till this day, the parental advisory as a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. That was the first time I ever saw that. Harrelson's wearing it. Most saw it after T-shirt of my youth. Never got it. Me oh, either. Never yeah. got it. I wanted Me either. It so so much bad. so I watched this not long ago, and it's like maybe I get one of those shirts finally because you can get on the internet, you can find <laughs> right, anything. Right. Uh-huh. And it just yeah, I don't know. That day may have passed. <laughs> <laughs> now that you brought it up, I might I might go home and order. I, that had, shirt. I almost talked myself into it. I was like, you know, I always love that shirt. That's why I buy these shirts. I couldn't. I was a kid. I couldn't buy all these basketball yeah. shirts that I loved. And the tie dye hat. Yeah. I, I oh yeah, love, the tie dye hat. I always love, backwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and, I can hear Jimmy. I can hear Jimmy. <laughs> There's so many great uh, scenes in that, mm-hmm. smaller scenes in that movie. Mm-hmm. Like even with Rosie Perez, and I forget the actress's name who plays Wesley Snipes' wife. Oh, when they show it. up to his house after Wesley's hustled, Woody, and she's trying, to, Rosie's trying to say, well, you got to pay, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, he got, like, you think the women are going to band together, but they have their own division mm-hmm. as well, which is really interesting. Oh, that's my favorite scene. I enjoy it. One of my favorite scenes in the movie yeah. is when they're all arguing and it's getting pretty heated. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there's, like, a great play on it, yes. the Lakers made, and they all stop their argument mm-hmm. to watch the action. Yeah, they start to yeah. celebrate yeah. when yeah. the plea or whatever unfolds. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, they're I like, yeah, know, what a great bus. Oh, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know so much more about every character's backstory in that movie. I want to know how close Sidney got when he was coming out of high school. Yeah. You know, I want to yeah. know. I, I want to go see the prequel Dude, with the Stooky the brothers. The King and the Duck? Yeah, the King I and the I want to see the King oh, and the Duck in their, yeah. their fucking heyday. Yeah. Marcus Johnson, baby. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's uh, – you guys have to read the uh, – um, what do they call those accounts when they, they do those articles where they interview people involved with the show, with the movie? Oh, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, the retrospectives. If you find the ret- – they, they did – I think the I think Grantland of the Ringer did a great retrospective really? on White Man Can't Jump. Where they, they interviewed Boogie Nights, everybody. Yeah, the Boogie Nights one is legend. It's great. Yeah, but the one they did for or, – or maybe it was Esquire of Writing. One of these places did a great retrospective on, on uh, White Man Can't Jump, and they interviewed just about everybody about it huh. and how they came about it and all the scenes and who could play, who really – who couldn't play and how they had to shoot certain things a certain way and Woody and uh, uh, Wesley doing their thing. Because remember – Wesley is the bigger star at this time. Woody is just coming out of Cheers. Yeah, he hadn't really made his full foray into uh, movies yet. Right. Wesley is like the big star. Yeah. A couple years later, you got People versus Larry Flint and right. a few other things under his belt. He's established himself at yeah, this th- point. Yeah, this is like he, he's going to have comedy moments in the movie, right. but he's also going to be having a, other things to do in this film. Yeah, yeah he's got and heart. He plays a real person as opposed to an idiot it, like mm-hmm. he did on Cheers. Wait, it it kind of it kind of surprises me how on board I was when they announced that they were remaking White Man Can't Jump. Um, I don't LeBron's like it. production company, I believe, is, uh, no. is is behind it. Are they really? And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, hopefully, I don't know it stays in the phase it's in and never makes it. Yeah, but I, it's production. definitely not going to break my heart if it never gets made. Yeah, but yeah. White Man Can't Jump to me, it's uh, it just it it does what these. These sports movies that we're all talking about, too, yeah. it, 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 there's good sports in it, yeah. and it's fun, but yeah. there's also so There's a much good story life. on top of that. Yeah, yeah, like that that scene I will always remember now when she says, sometimes when I'm thirsty, I just need you to hear that I'm thirsty. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. need a drink of water. That blew my fucking mind. Yeah. As a person in his 20s when I saw this movie, I was like, I've never had that concept in my mind. Sometimes I was like, when you win, yeah. you really lose. You really lose. Yeah. And sometimes when you lose, yeah. you really win. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you Plus, lose, you tie. <laughs> Rosie Perez's uh, his boobs. And I uh, was a very big fan of that <laughs> when I was a kid. While she was studying foods that start with the letter Q. Uh, what is yeah. quince? <laughs> and it's tragic. It's almost Shakespearean it tragic than that mo- that he cannot res- and she kiss it's heartbreaking. Cause you know she's she leaving him. Blades away. She's leaving him. Yeah. yeah. 
And Wes, and you know, and but they, but it still ends on a happy note. Listen to the kinda, woman. kinda, because Wesley and the and the same doo wop little singers. Yeah, which to is close great. out. Great yeah. way to intro and exit a movie. Yeah, yeah. agreed, agreed. All right, well, that's our uh, separate top ten lists. Now, uh, as you know, those of you who listen to the show, uh, those of you listening for the first time, because Mark Ellis is on it. Thank you for listening. Uh, we combine our <laughs> lists into one thank list. Thank you, horde of All fans, right. for following me. You're on bongos. I am on the bongos this time, so you guys go ahead and... Oh, are you going to write the list? Yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, okay, cool, perfect. All right, so that means old Whitey is number one. <laughs> Can I say the best... Uh, oh, okay, we're doing the, the countdown? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're creating the list. Okay. Well, shit, does that mean Hoop Dreams goes to number two? <sighs> Technically, Fuck. yeah, that means Hoosiers would be Fuck. free. I hate you right now, Mark Ellis. Best, uh, best basketball scene in a movie that we're not talking about that has nothing to do with basketball otherwise sure. is Along Came Polly. Uh, how, <laughs> oh, yeah. how comically bad Philip Seymour Hoffman is. He's so at, confident. Uh, on purpose. Make yeah. it rain. Yeah, it's so, it's just, oh man, those scenes always kill me. <laughs> oh, please, be, uh, uh, Stiller's face rubbing against that dude's hairy chest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just, oh man. All right, so the first three then are done. We got White <sighs> Man Can't Jump, Hoop Dreams, and Hoosiers. We're going to get so much shit for those. That was right. easy. What do you guys have next? I got He Got Game at four. I got that at four. I what? have uh, Teen Wolf at four. I have He Got Game at five. So, so that's got That be means next. He Got Game is next. Okay. Just uh, trying it out. All right. I don't have Team Wolf. Do we all have Finding Forrester? I have Team Wolf at number eight. I do not have Finding Forrester. You do not, but we have that at five. Do we have any other three-way? We do not. Blue Chips? I do not have it on my list. Okay. Well, that means the two fives of Finding Forrester and then probably yeah. Team Wolf after that? Uh, okay. Well, we have Love and Basketball. Oh, that's right. Where do you guys have that? I have Love and Basketball at eight. I have it at five. And you have Team Wolf where? Four. That means Team Wolf would go next. Yeah. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. You're Deserve right. it. Because then you had Team Wolf at eight? I did. Yeah. So he's got you beat one there. Yep. Uh, we both had Space Jam at seven. Blue Chips, where did you have? You had that three, four? Blue Chips at three. Where's Love and Basketball? Where'd you put that? I don't have it. It's between the two of you. No, no. I mean, and where you put it? I haven't gotten to it yet. That's what I'm oh. trying to hash out yeah, now. Yeah, because he had it at what number did you have it? I had a number uh, eight. I had, eight. Eight. He, I had it at five. So okay. that's the next thing. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Blue Chips, number three. I have that at 10, and then we both have Space Jam at seven. Do oh, but we have Finding Forrester, don't we? That's already on. It is. Combined, we both have it at five. Oh, five, right. Six, so it's higher, the, logically. Yeah. Okay, so where are we at now? Number what? Eight overall. Ooh. We got eight, nine, okay. and ten left. We both have Space Jam at seven, and then fair? Blue Chips, three, ten. Do you guys have anything in common? Uh, and do we have anything in common? Well, Not did we put Teen uh, Wolf on yet? Already? We already got yes. Teen Wolf on Okay. Now. Uh, and no. love and basketball is already on there. Yes, well, I, I feel. Oh like yeah, you got fast break and fish to save Pittsburgh and forget Paris and forget. Okay, so that means then Space Jam uh, is three ten or two sevens. What do you guys think? Three ten probably higher. Two seven. Two sevens. Seven I, seven. Honestly, oh, seven, seven. although I love three blue ten. chips, I would say two sevens should be yeah. the the higher. No, the What's lower the two number. sevens? Space Jam. Yeah. So Space Jam above blue chips. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fair. Carry the waste yeah, as much as I love uh, blue chips. Then we have what? What do we want at ten, guys? It's got to be uh, rebound. The I feel like fast. I feel stuff. like fast break is the one since you wanted to put it on. Where, hold on, where do you have fast break? Well, I have forget Paris at seven, but I don't think we should put it on. What's the list. your next highest? Uh, rebound at what? Number nine. I got semi pro at six, gentlemen. <laughs> so no. semi pro is sneaking on. I feel like that fast list. break wow. should be on. This is a crime. Roka, I apologize for putting Eddie in above Fast Break. Damn it, man. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg's the reason you why have. Semi-Pro Man. We would have I, don't had know seen, I might have seen Fast Break. I know uh, Gabe Kaplan's in it, and he's, yeah, about, that's about it. God damn it. <laughs> Semi-Pro sucks. All right. Uh, the top ten basketball movies, yeah. At number 10, Semi Pro. Wait, you like to hang this thing here. I'm going to try to do it your way that you like to do it. Right. At number 9, Blue Chips. At number 8, Space Jam. At number 7, Love and Basketball. At number 6, <laughs> it's like you're trying to change up the rhythm, but then it creates a hiccup for you. At number six is Teen Wolf. The song that they play to intro the game where Woody dunks for the first time yeah. starts out with bongo drums. It does? Yeah. Okay. Was that number six? That was number six. Okay. At number five. Finding Forrester. 
At number four. He got game. At number three. Hoosiers. Numero dos. Hoop dreams. And just a nearer walk with me. The number one movie, basketball movie, is White Man Can't Jump. Wow, White Man Can't Jump. Beat Hoosiers and Hoop Dreams. Listen to the woman. My word. That's right. Always <laughs> listen to the woman. Sometimes when you lose, you really win. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that's all our that's our combined list there uh, of top ten basketball movies. What I think there's a lot of movies in here that if you haven't seen, you'd enjoy, irregardless of whether they're about basketball or not, because one some of the, all the best basketball movies really are about more than just yeah. basketball. They're symbolic. It's about the life that's leading. Yeah. You know, the, anyway, the individual that's in it, not just the fact that they're playing basketball. Yeah, and how basketball so. provides them an outlet to like exp- expand themselves even more. So it's interesting in that way. Um, I want to thank Mark Ellis for coming on the show. Mark, how, how was your experience being on the show? Hey, you know what? To quote Wesley in the number one basketball movie of all time, <laughs> White Man Can't Jump, the sun even shines on a dog's ass some days. <laughs> I am Mark Ellis, and I would rather look good and lose than look bad and win. I used that line the other day. Hey, look, man, sometimes even the sun even shines good. on a dog's ass every once in a while. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's just so pretty. It's pretty. I'm just going to leave it up there. Exactly, and he just dances out of uh, the frame. Just so good. Oh, anyway, uh, I love the Jane Fonda. <laughs> Not the Jane Fonda geriatric bullshit. Um, anyway, so tired ass up here, Gretzky. <laughs> What, uh, Mark, where can people find you? Where can they follow you? In case they, in six, for some insane reason, people don't really follow you already. Uh, you can get all the, uh, all the info at any of the social medias at Mark Ellis Live, uh, doing a big stand up show in San Diego during Comic Con, where, uh, you might see some, uh, some other luminaries in our little universe here. And, uh, just very excited to be <laughs> you, on. You think you'll help out give a start to some, to more young, <laughs> fresh talent out there? They'll be singing your praises. Is there anybody new that we should keep an eye out for? Uh, th- there's just this or guy. returning veterans. <laughs> Wears a cowboy hat that um, on occasion. You know, he uh, he goes up there. He tells a few yucks, and yeah. he really gets the crowd excited. Let me, let me ask: How racist are the jokes? I just assume it's, <laughs> it's full bore. I hate whitey. The whole time. Knowing what I know uh, <laughs> and from conversations in the green room, it's very tame on stage. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Unfortunately, it is very tame on stage, man. Um, all right. And uh, do, do you, uh, where can they go for your other – like MarkAllisLive.com? Yeah, you yeah. All yes. your tour dates there? We go get tickets and all that kind of good okay. stuff. So, uh, right. yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Oh, you're welcome. And, and you know, if you guys want to watch him every day as the host of Movie Talk on Collider, you can do that. The Schmodown, he has the Schmo's No Show. They have their uh, reviews on films of him and Christian Harlow. So if you want – if you haven't for some reason not tuned in ever to Mark Ellis and you discovered him because you're part of our show – then please go enjoy some of his comedy. You go on YouTube, I think. He's got some bits on YouTube that he has little jokes and does his yucks for And my well. most important role yeah. uh, will be uh, the referee oh. in the upcoming sometime this or next year in the works basketball yeah. game between you two versus Jeff Snyder and JT. Oh. This is, I know you'll keep it fair, and that's what I appreciate about you. I want to know what we what is going to be within the bounds yeah. of being called. Like, yeah. are you going to be calling charges? Because then I will set up for charges. Otherwise, I'm gonna I'm not going to put myself on the line. I like mean, that. I'm definitely going to call charges. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'm just it's, saying it, it's going to be more playground rule. I want it to feel like playground rule. That's what I assumed. I, like, I'm not going to call every little you know ticky tack foul, but good. if it's clear, here's the it, I have the easiest job. What I'm really good, all I have to look out for is traveling. And double dribble and stuff okay. like that because we're so accustomed to when we're playing on a playground um, to calling fouls on ourselves Yeah, that you're just going to do it naturally. So I'm not too worried about that, but I will see it if uh, – you know, I ref games in college for every sport. To what about hand earn check? Money, so. uh, hand checking is I'm, – I'm cool with hand check. Okay. Little shirt pulls every once in a while? I, do, I do not like shirt pulls. Yeah, that's a foul. I do not is a like, foul. You're, you're, yeah. I always thought impeding lane, their speed. It's a sign of a lazy ass defender. It is, or a lazy gen- player in general. I agree with okay. that. Okay, Wait, let's be honest. Look, Nobody's going to be running fast enough to necessitate <laughs> pulling their jersey. Okay? Look, I still have some a little. This one of the oh, few you're things. fine. Yeah, yeah, I can run all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great thing. I really only have to watch Nose and yeah. JT, yeah. but like you and Snyder, mm-hmm. just you guys are just going to be like this this mass mm-hmm. of human down low. I'm a, I'm, I'm camping underneath. Yeah. Are you calling so you three seconds? Do. Are you calling three seconds or no? No, and two on two, there's no, no such thing. No. Great. No. It's, yeah. it's this is street ball. Since when you call two, it's like calling, uh, you know, over and back. Okay. <laughs> okay. There is 
There is no half court right now. Yeah, right. This is two on two. Yeah, I oh, do want to do great. a jump ball though. I think we should do Fair. a jump ball. Fair. Just start off. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I hadn't even thought about it. Is sure. it make a ticket? Um, or is it going to be alternate? We haven't. I mean, it uh, we haven't okay. determined it yet. Okay. Yeah. We have, we have I, not I would assume. Okay. It. Just trade off. We make. They get. Win by two, or they miss, and then we get the ball back. We make. They get. It, they it miss. We get the ball back. Win by two. Win by two. The three point line. There's a one and twos. Mm, so most. there's a two point line. You camp out there, Nost. Yeah. Don't you worry about it. Can't wait. Yeah. Eleven to nothing. That's that's the real that that's the test because I'm assuming you and Snyder, I haven't seen either one of y'all play. I'm assuming you guys are gonna cancel each other out. Maybe not necessarily in terms of strict game, what you bring, what right. your talents are, right. but I think that what you your positives and negatives are gonna weigh outweigh his positives and negatives mm-hmm. and vice versa. Nost and JT is the one to keep your eye on because right. Nost, I've seen Nost get hot. Yeah. And I've seen JT get hot. And I've seen Nost have really good games where he's he's doing well from outside. Then he can also hit the rack. And JT, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people underestimate JT if they've never played him before. How good he is at getting to the hole. Yep. He's got his spots. Yeah, but he's um, got his spots so that that's that's the matchup to look out for. Nost, I, th- I Nost is definitely a better defender than JT. Mm-hmm. In and and what I mean by that is that Matt tries to play defense. Oh. Shit, right. I blocked him so, twice the last time I played yeah. him on Saturday. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nost, uh, <laughs> if the, Nost can be a lockdown defender. was good, defender, too. So. Just kind of fucking to the third row. <laughs> and he was like, oh, fuck, you blocked that? I'm like, the ball's over there. What do you, <laughs> what do you fucking think? That is 100 yards away. You That's are still Ecuadorian. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Once Matt and I get into a rhythm of the two-man game, I think those boys are toast. Yeah. Well, they, hopefully they, 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 they have good well. chemistry, too. Though. Yeah. They yeah. do. Oh, no, I do. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. There's, I'm not denying that. Matt Snyder's better than I thought. He knows what he can do, and he knows what he can't. Right. And mm-hmm. I was kind of hoping he would still be pushing himself to do things he can't. But he's kind of learned, I can do this. He, he keeps talking how he's got more movies he hasn't shown on the basketball. No, he's saving a, them for the game. That's utter horseshit. What are you talking yeah. about? No, we, we all left those movies in high school. That's yeah, right. I did. My early 20s, I haven't played the same. Yeah. And now I've got too many injuries. I don't have up. the desire to play the same. No. For the strict reason that I do not have injuries. And I'd like to keep it that way. Yeah, yeah I've already hurt myself enough times where it's just like, I'm, I'm yeah. now carrying this injury for the rest of my life <laughs> for Saturday basketball. You remember I, doing? I broke my hand in Saturday basketball when, when she's, John Cheeser was just throwing a pass over the middle and I put my hand up to block it. And she's has, she, not, it's, it's not like he's trying to pass to me. I was defending yeah. him. But I put my hand up to block it. Cheese has a, has a cannon. He has a hoga boom arm. And boom, it just bent my fingers back, broke my, uh, broke my hand right here. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was my second day back uh, when my health insurance was bad. <laughs> oh, thank I, was, God. I was uninsured for two years. Yeah, thank and God. And that was the second day it, it, it had kicked in. <laughs> oh, fair point. All right, well, Mark, we have to say goodbye to you because we've got to do these pi- yeah, this package. Yeah, we, then we, we have guys. Patreon shout-outs yeah, for those of us. This is a we'll long be back. show. Yeah, for you guys, it'll be three oh, seconds. For okay. us, it'll be a couple well, we minutes. We were uh, yeah. having a good time, but I guess my presence. No, we're going to kick no, you out. Yeah, I mean, if you want to stay while we do all this, that's fine. But you want to see us open another gift? i got no problem with that. You want to listen to us read a bunch of names? Are, you guys rub any more of your 1992 Dream Team tokens in look, my face. I will take my business that, elsewhere. The size of that box, that might be a leftover bust from the Hall of Fame. I don't know. So right. it's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. I really hope somebody sent you a VHS copy of Eddie because that's what you guys need. Well, if it is, it's like the platinum certified one of like the VHS sales and they send it to Whoopi Goldberg. That's how heavy it is. A gold plated one. Yeah. <laughs> a platinum one or a diamond, and it's just encrusted with fake diamonds. That's perfect. Uh, thank you, boys, for having me. I really do appreciate thank you, Mark uh, Ellis. coming on the show. I am a fan, and um, it was good to live out my dream here today. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I, w- I do want to ask him one last thing before he goes. Who put us together? Um, How did that come about? Because Christian says, oh, I just put them together. Like, who put it? Like, because you, you and Christian started this whole po- thing between Matt and I. Who put us together? Who suggested? Like, uh, uh, Christian's responsible for okay. uh, the, right. the, the podcasting that happens under the Schmo's banner. Yeah. That's, uh, that, that's something yeah. that falls under uh, Casa de Harwa. <laughs> yeah, I met okay. with Christian like three times. Okay. Yeah. I think this gentleman only showed up to the one you showed up to. Right. Okay, fair it, enough. Yeah. Okay. But I, I mean, I do remember Christian and I talking about it. Yeah. Because, because you know, he'll like, it, like any idea he has. He, he'll like run by me and yeah. we'll kind of talk it out and weigh the pros and cons. A lot of cons with this conversation. <laughs> um, but I think he was just wondering if, if y'all would have good chemistry. Right. And I just, because I, I knew Nost so well. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Nost is going to get along. Nost has professional timing and he's got all this stuff that Nost is a very easy guy to do a podcast with. Right. And I knew that you would come from back then, you know, I knew that you would come from the world of voiceover and mm-hmm. performing stuff like that. So I thought it would be a pretty natural fit. But yeah, it was. Totally Christian's brainchild. Okay. All right. Well, there we go. I just wanted to know. His sure. Side of things. All right. Well, thanks again, Mark. And uh, like I said, uh, follow Mark at Mark Ellis Live 
And uh, hopefully in the near future, we'll have you back on again if you want to come on. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, have fun opening your mail on air. <laughs> Enjoy that. No problem. Listener. I can't wait. It's gonna be gonna be a whole. This is great radio. Let's let's open some mail, pay some bills. Are you kidding me? The fans love it. They, <laughs> they keep do. sending us more gifts. Yeah. They love, they uh, clearly love it just as much as we they do. They love man. getting the shout out for uh, you. Yeah. yeah, we're doing unboxings on a podcast. My no best to your families for sending you gifts. Though. Do not want to dissuade them of that. Well, that's right. Our families are very generous. <laughs> They're very kind. All right, later, brother. I don't want to know what's in the box. See, I told you, you could See? stay. That's the beauty. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> All right, fine. Oh, man, that was fun. Mark Ellis is one of the... Uh, I always enjoy that guy, man. Do you want to do Patreon shout-outs first and then close with uh, Sure. Gift? All right, that's fine. Yeah. So do you want, you want to tee it up? And then Give we'll the go? people what they want? Yeah. All right, let me pull up that email that I sent to you. Yeah, I got it here. And... Uh, I want to thank you for sending that out. We're going to do Patreon shout-outs. You know, for those of you who donate, what is it, $5 and above? Five and above. You get a little shout-out from us at the end of every month. Is that correct? That is correct. And so we're going to do that now. We're going to yeah, go, this lands uh, on the last show of the month. So thank you to um, mm-hmm. everybody that supported us. And uh, once again, oh don't say the <laughs> email address. <laughs> the actual email? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Fair enough. I'm well, sorry. Just needless editing. There's I no agree. point in creating extra work. All right. So who starts? It doesn't matter. You got it in front of you? Uh, sure, yeah. Start us off. All right. Matthew Hasso. Mike Barrington. Wiley Todd. Camilo Gutierrez. Gil Reyes. Drew Enns. Sean Brennan. Andrew Hayes. Robert Haley. Mackenzie Horner. Claiborne Williams. Thanks for the shirts, Clay. Christos Alexakos. Alexakos, yes. Eric Grebner. Jonathan Peck. Alec Christie. Frank Montoya. Dylan Steiner. Rachel Silvestrini. Hey, Rachel. Jake Higgins. George Menchaca. Of the Menchacas. Yes, now apparently <laughs> there is a triumvirate yes. of Menchacas. I love it. Zach Butts. Martin Borak. Uh, John Douse. Joey Anthony. Lawrence Witt. Ellis Menchaca. Oh, shit. Sean Naughton. Uh, Trené Mogard. Andrew Marker. Fuzzy Large. Brian Seferni. Hey, Brian. Spencer, a.k.a. Freightway. Kevin Fuss. Blair Simpson. Ashley Prowles. Wayne Murphy. Dan Somerville. Philip Renshaw. Cameron Belgrade. Ben Archambault. Uh, Rudy A. Martinez. Eric Ritz. Sujayanth Fernando. Brett Yo. Uh, Matthew Picardet. Deborah Torres. Joey Peter, Eric Bouchard, Ruben Enriquez, Tom Costony, Matt Yund, Anthony Casanova, uh, Ian, oh, uh, Ian Brick, Bertrand Lopez, Beltran Lopez, I think, Dwayne Burke, Phil, uh, Phil Morissette, Eric Bloor, Phil Neglia, uh, Gulick Grenerud, Ed Buskirk, Alec Miller, Niall Blackie, Brian Aseguera, John Keefe, Edward Dobbins, uh, Chris Consiglio, Tim Begg. Lindsay Toll. Simon Bruyard. Jason Loau. Kristen Smith. Uh, hey, Kristen. Jose de la Torre. Austin Fuentes. Ryan M. Brandos. Uh, let's see. Jonas Marin. Chris Jones. April Rybacki. David Mitchell Baker. Jack Van Ord. Josh Sachs. Marcel Behrman. Zach Maciel. Yeah, Marcel. Yeah. Um, do you want to say Zach's name? I Zach Maciel. Apologize for that. No worries. Uh, Jason Shroom. Eli Moore. Hi, Leah. MF Doom. <laughs> Motherfucking Doom. I love that. Cody Markham. Somebody brought it up. I wonder if that's the rapper. I'm pretty sure it's not, but I, <laughs> I hope it is too because I, I hope enjoy it is that too. guy. Uh, Noel Kelleher. Christian Lorenko. Robert Cooper. Elise Brancato. Patrick Campbell. What's up, PJ? Nick Gilmore. Enrique Cabras. Kevin Shaw. Chris Gohans. Uh, Ole Heska. Isaiah Belcher. Alex Ramsey. Nicholas Smith. Kevin Hills. Fraser Jubb. Jack McIntyre. Daniel, parenthetically, Dens Mosley. Yes. Uh, Jason Taylor. Simon Huffnagel. Mike Shea. What's up, Mike? Jay Watson. Thomas Streeton. Seth Shearer. Philip Lane. Seamus Braytag. Ryan McKenna. Sam Bell. Joel Rosario. Matthew Lee Cravens. John Holloway. Josh Murphy. Johannes Schmidt. Joshua Stein. Jesus Christ, man. These are amazing. Andrew Erbs. Dude, there's a lot. Joseph oh, Burtwistle. Jacob Gustafson. Giancarlo Simonetta. Andy Ortiz. <laughs> Andrew Berger. Jim Payne. Uh, Yure Mugerli. Laura Deverson. Patrick Zamora. Norwegian Blue. Norwegian Blue. <laughs> uh, Brian Akins. Uh, Devion Akinsanya. Good one. Simon Skjot Thompson. Lord God. I don't uh, even know if I got that right. Yeah, Kjartan Heigl. 
Uh, Eva, a.k.a. Evil. Uh, Tim Koskuba. Jacob Pullen. Christian Lungard uh, K. I would something? say Kuehler. Kuehler? Oh, there we go. Kuehler, yeah, yeah. Jeff Saliba. Uh, Ian Morgan. Julian Key. Dan Nye. Joshua William. Matt Chipping. Matt O. The Cinephiles. Thanks, Steve. Andrew O'Day. Martin Collins. Josh James. Ryan Davila. Dale Varley. Juan Reyes. Jerome Cunningham. Magali Dorv. Is that right? Dore. Magali Dore. Sure. Ricky Rivers. Gordon Rustling. Uh, Matthew Lafrenier. Aaron Carroll. Nick Dornoff. Nick White. Jeff Peters. Tyler Spots. Jeremy Metz. Josh Ryan. Jen Kemp. Jen. Francisco Ramirez Burgos. Will Morse. Bar Shamrick. Uh, Thomas Price. Mike Austin. Alec Musial. Uh, Alexander Marjo Marzona. N.A. Nicole A. Uh, Thorsten uh, Ammuller. Thorsten A. Mueller. Uh, Jose Goico Valentin. Evan Zoller. Jonathan Chase. Luke Larson. Jesse Frost. And Alex McFarland. Boom! That, that is awesome. That list grows every month. Yeah. Every month. We want to say thanks to all of you that support us on Patreon, no matter what level you're on. Yeah. Um, I wanted to bring this up to you. What's up? Because we have not talked about it. The, the old episodes. Uh-huh. Do we want Because technically, after they hear this, the next day will be the last one, and then we start pulling. Oh, shit. Do we want to incentivize? Already? Say, yeah. Do we want to say to the people, you know what, because we forgot to mention that, hey, we're going to start pulling them down? Yeah. Do you want to give them a month leeway this one time? Yeah, I think we should. And then after the end of next month, yeah. I'm pulling five down that first week. This is the announcement. Yeah. And we'll, I will be sure to announce it over the next course of the next month. Yeah. But, hey, that shit is coming down. Yeah. That shit is coming down. Yeah. But we just never talked about it. I feel guilty then of the, those people that may have been on the fence. Right. So you'll still have access to the old ones. The game plan originally, for those that don't know, is... Uh, after three months, then when a new one goes up, an old one comes off. So they, we're just cycling through. Uh, and, uh, basically, so we'll, we'll extend that deadline for one month, and then we'll start yeah. uh, after next month. And for those of you who are new contributors, what Matt is talking about is old episodes that when we first Thank you. Thank you. started doing the podcast three years ago, uh, we did a previous iteration of the podcast. We did a number of things, and uh, so we've started to release those episodes uh, because they weren't per- previously available for consumption. Oh, man. Right and into the, the injury. Knee. The injury. Uh, so if you want to see us talking about, like, top ten car chases or any number of things that happened way at the beginning, you can uh, download those old episodes. They're available on Patreon. So this, yeah, we got this another from? package. Who is this for? This is massive. This is huge. It's from Adam Collins. What, what do you oh, think that you, is? Uh, uh, 12 to 14 inches tall. Yeah. It by, like, just... 8 to 10 inches wide. <laughs> It's it weighs I don't know ten pounds sure something like that I want this to be a Looney Tunes like bomb in all there. the way from Seabrook New Hampshire oh thank you Adam Collins nice. so there's there's uh, Kentucky San Francisco and where's Jay Golden Eyes from I don't remember oh I don't remember where that's from yeah. sorry but well, we got everybody the bongos, that keeps right Jay Golden Eyes yeah the he got us the bongos. Thank you, Jay. Gorgeous over there. Look at you doing the unboxing. This is incredible. This is riveting radio right now. Yeah. Here, oh, unboxing. it's great. It's great. Oh, look, they want to keep sending it. We are happy to Absolutely. take it. Absolutely. At first, I was felt guilty of being excited with getting a gift, and now I'm like, man, they in- apparently enjoy sending them, so should why we, stop them? Should we say the address? Because we're asked the address all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send it to uh, my wife's uh, pizza shop, 108 South Highland, Fullerton, California, 92832. And that's two saucy two saucy broads. Two saucy broads. Put care of at the top. Matt knows two saucy broads. Yeah, and then they'll know to set it aside for us down there. Yeah. Holy shit! There's packing peanuts. Oh. There's a Ziploc here. Oh. Looks like we got some shirts. I'll let you open that one. Okay. Okay. See what else we got going uh, here. Oh, it's a brewing company. I'm happy about that. Oh my god. What do you got? Whatever in the world this is. Oh. That weighs. It looks like a miniature car battery. I have no okay. idea. This might be beer, actually. <laughs> oh! I think this is beer. We'll have to have one. Uh, All right, these are. Fr- this is from <laughs> Nost. We got the Outlaw Brewing Company, son. Oh, it's holy shit! <laughs> what size you got on that? Uh, large and are maybe. You find, look at this. Army oh! of Dark- Darkness. Nice little Ash Funko Pop. That's yeah. great. Are you kidding me with this? I want to see if there's a letter or anything. Oh, I guess they, uh, yeah, this is your large because they put an X large. I would imagine it's on the larger Here mammal. Here we go. Here we go. Here's oh, yeah. yeah let's, let's hear it. All right. And this is everything in the box? That is everything in the box. Okay. You want to open this? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because I think sure, that's sure, beer sure. and that would probably be for you. Okay. 
Well, unless it's IPA, then it could be for you. Well, no. I don't drink. Oh, that's God damn it. So it's for you entirely. Sorry, wow. sorry, sorry. I always forget that kind of stuff. We got stickers or potentially outlaw temporary tattoos. I don't know exactly <laughs> what these are. There's a whole bunch of them. Look at this. Oh, this is awesome. Look so I'm that. guessing. This is your. I would imagine this is yours. This is Adam's. All right. Oh, well, oh wow. That's a long letter. Uh, this Break is a long down. letter. Well, now I feel bad because the one week, I think it was Claiborne, I didn't read the whole thing because it was on my, my phone and it was two full screens. Well, not to be outdone, Claiborne posted it on yeah, the Facebook Yeah, and I'm glad page. that he did. I'm glad that he did. Is that uh, this gonna is going to be tough, but go ahead. All right. So this is uh, dated June 11th, oh, 2018. Dun, dun, dun. Greetings, Matt and John. Thank you. Thanks again for helping me send you this care package. I'm a longtime fan of your show and everything else you do on Collider and the Schmodown. I'm a film school grad whose enthusiasm for cinema has only grown over the years, but I don't always have the luxury of discussing the topic with equally passionate individuals. Who does? That's why shows like The Top Ten are such a valuable outlet to me. Or for me, rather. I ended up following my other passion for beer, wine, and whiskey into the beverage industry, and I spent a good deal of my time traveling throughout New England, visiting breweries, wineries, and distilleries. It was during these travels when I discovered Outlaw Brewing Company in New Hampshire. (laughs) John will likely recall when I tweeted at him about it a few months ago. Yes, I do. Since then, I've met and gotten to know the founder and owner of Outlaw uh, Brewing, Rick, a dedicated beer craftsman, entrepreneur, and all-around good dude. After hearing about uh, gifts being sent to the show of uh, recent episodes, on recent episodes, I thought it would be... A uh, great time to partner with Rick and send you an Outlaw Brewing gift package. What? Every time I see the logo, I can't help but think of John Roca. And while the contents of the box are meant for both of you, I recognize that the inspiration is owed to John's Outlaw personality on the Schmodown. With that in mind, Aww. I also included the ash for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> it is my first and only Funko Pop. That's incredible, dude. Uh, but it will, it will go on my desk in a place of uh, great uh, prominence. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope that you enjoy this small uh, token of appreciation for everything you guys bring the joy to film fanatics like me. I look forward to the podcast every week when I'm on the road and happy to support you on Patreon along with many other esteemed peers. In fact, your work has inspired me to produce my own podcast with my wife. Hey. There you go. That's you pro- great. You provide a valuable service, so please uh, chill down this beer, crack it open, and share a toast to the ongoing success of the top ten. And then uh, check out uh, Outlaw Brewing Company on Facebook, Twitter, at, at Outlaw or at The Outlaw Brew Co. Wow. And Instagram at at the Outlaw Brewing Company. And for any fans of the Top Ten Schmodown, Schmodown or Outlaw Nation, be sure to check out the brewery. P.S. I need to eventually see the Top Ten versus Critically Claimed on the Schmodown. <laughs> there it is. Wow. Dude, this is pretty incredible. What, uh, what are the beers? Well, there's an there's a American Blonde Ale, which I may pop open, actually. Okay. Uh, and the uh, English Brown Ale. Which is from the and then uh, a uh, uh, the outlaw pale ale. I should probably open the outlaw pale ale. I would imagine. Yeah, the pale ale and the brown ales would be my first go to. Yeah, interesting. If I were still a drinking man. That's right. That's right. Well, you enjoy that. I, I, I well, will enjoy my Funko Pop. I'm opening it right now as we speak. Son of a bitch. Here, no. Let's get a a photo of that. You want know, to entitle this one from one outlaw to another? There you go. Yeah. That is gorgeous. Thank you, Adam. Oh, that is damn good. That is damn good. Shout out to the Outlaw Brewing Company. Thank you, Adam, so much. For, and what a, what a nice letter. Yeah. Great letter. Tons of stickers. All kinds of fun stuff. Thank, wow. you to, uh, thank you to you, Adam, and everybody else that decide that they would like to send us something. We yeah. appreciate it every time. Um, we're going to have to open a studio and start setting up all this stuff. And just put, <laughs> you know, certain things go on the wall and certain things yeah. you're wearing around. and. Uh, yeah. This is gorgeous. Uh, in the future, our shirt sizes, what are you, medium? Uh, it depends, but yeah, more often than not, a medium. Yeah, I'm a large more often than not. So, what but, is that? Uh, but these, this is an extra large and a large. So well, if it's 100% cotton, it will shrink. It will shrink, right? So that's Unless great. it's pre-shrunk. Well, if anything else, it's a sleeping shirt. So I want to say thank you so much for this thing. And it's soft cotton, so I, I'm down with it. Yeah, this uh, is awesome. So, yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. Thank kind. you to... Uh, Man, he supports us on Patreon and yeah. decides to send us a gift. This is crazy times. It's very nice of you, man. It is. And thank you to everybody that supports us on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've finally taken care of a bunch of the back-end stuff. We're literally waiting on the state of California to fend- send us completed forms. Yep. And as soon as we get those completed forms from them, uh, from the Secretary of State, you guys will have T-shirts. <laughs> That's what we're waiting on is the Secretary of State of California. That son of a bitch. So if you guys want to heckle them on Twitter or something... <laughs> Hey, why don't you push through that? Uh, although we got the expedited service, so that's true. That's by true. the time they hear this, we should be damn close, if not finished. Right. 
But that's all we're waiting on. Once we get that, then we're good with the feds. We're good with the state. You guys get T-shirts, and we can make Ooh. all that happen. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll have, you know, uh, then we're reaching out to graphic designers, and we can pay the one guy we've already talked to. Yeah. Because we'll have a bank account. That's would be great to go. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Business expenses. Yeah, we'll have an actual business. We'll be cool with the government. That's Whereas, the most important thing. Yeah. Before, was, uh, we're just two assholes talking. Now we're <laughs> professional assholes talking. <laughs> oh. Um, what, but, yeah, thank you to all nice of term. you. If those who are still listening at this point and aren't uh, following or supporting us on Patreon, if you'd like to, go to patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10. Yeah. Uh, or you can hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the top 10 show with the number 10. Or me on any and all social media at Matt Nost, M A T T K N O S T. That's it for me this week. Okay. Uh, on to you, sir. You guys can always find me at The Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And, uh, you know, I want to say one more time thank you so much to Adam Collins for this incredible. You can follow him at A I Z A N T H O R if you want to give him a little bit of love uh, there. And, and Matt, I mean, uh, um, uh, Adam, you should have put the name of your podcast with your wife. We would have promoted that. Yeah, so let us know. Should, yeah, let us know. Hit we'll, us up on uh, Twitter or something. Exactly. And the social media will let you know. And uh, thanks to the Outlaw Brewing Company and also to Newberry Comics, I guess, which is where you bought the Funko Pop. So shout out to them as well. So thanks, everybody. And uh, uh, we really appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week on the Top 10 Show.